Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're getting ready to start the meeting. Uh, either stand if you wish or find a seat. Uh, okay. okay, excellent. So just a couple of remarks uh, before I get down to the official remarks. So this is a, another in a, in a long line of meetings, public meetings that we've had. Uh, I imagine um, some of you were here when we had the cannabis meeting. We had over approximately 400 people out to that meeting. It was, uh, uh, the meeting goes as smoothly uh, as, as we make it go, as, as you the citizens make it go. If, if we talk back and forth, everybody has respect and, and for everybody, uh, it, it ends up being a, an excellent meeting. We change information back and forth and, and the meeting ends up being a, a benefit to everyone. So, uh, like I say, we, the, the meeting, we had a meeting last night with Airbnbs and council chambers. Uh, everything went excellent. Uh, well, I know myself, council, and staff are looking for uh, another great meeting here tonight, change some ideas. Uh, we uh, hope that you've studied the alternatives that uh, staff have come up with, uh, and we can uh, uh, debate those at length. So, we have to get this uh, few things we have to get out of the way and then we can get started. So I see that we have quorum, so I call this special committee of the whole meeting uh, to session uh, for, um, what is it, uh, oh, October 23rd, 2019, um, and uh, adoption of agenda. Motion put forward by Councillor Stewart that the agenda for the October 23rd, 2019 special meeting of committee be adopted as circulated. Any comments on, uh, or comments or changes to the agenda? Not seeing any, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, all those against. Thank you, motion carried. And uh, after looking at the agenda, is there any counselor that has a pecuniary interest in general nature thereof to declare? Not seeing any, I ask the no clerk to please note that. Okay, so opening remarks, these are the official opening remarks. Pelham Council values public feedback. <laughs> Members of the public, uh, as we said, uh, uh, we keep the whole thing at a respectful um, level. Uh, it goes a lot better, goes excellently that way. We ask that anyone who wants to make a presentation, we have, I believe, uh, two people who are pre-registered. After that, at one point, we will open it up to the public. Uh, please uh, come to the mic uh, and um, uh, state your name for the, for the record, and then uh, you can give your presentation also. We have, um, yeah, so obviously one speaker at a time. We have, uh, as we did with the cannabis meeting, we are having a maximum of three minutes to the people who are coming from the floor. We are giving the presenters that have pre-registered uh, a little more leeway. The, the one gentleman has a presentation that he's worked very hard on and it's going to uh, uh, take uh, 10 or 12 minutes. So on him, we are making an exception. For the, for the other people that are here, we're hoping that when you address, you can uh, keep your comments down to three minutes. A bell will ring at two minutes and 30 seconds, and when you hear the first bell, you've got another uh, 30 seconds, please, to finish your presentation. Uh, provide a copy of all written materials or presentations to the clerk for the record. Um, the chair has the response, no, I don't think we have to get here, but the chair, that's me, has a responsibility to expel a speaker from the meeting for non-compliance and may call a recess or adjourn the meeting in the case of grave disorder. Well, hopefully uh, we're a long way from that. I'll, uh, like I say, if somebody wants to come here and, and, and direct something to me, I don't mind. I'm an elected official. If you want to give me a hard time or anyone on this council, uh, go ahead, but I do. Rec I want the, the staff. Please, the staff. They put a lot of work in, and, and please treat them with uh, with the respect that they do. Thank you. 
Uh, attending, attendees shall maintain order by not applauding, heckling, or engaging in behavior that would be disrupted or disrespectful to other attendees, attendees the council of staff. Okay, so those are the rules. Uh, like I say, uh, the previous meetings we've had have gone excellent. I see no reason why this one cannot also have great results. The next on the agenda then is a uh, public works and utilities. A presentation by the Director of Public uh, Works and Utilities, uh, Jason Marr. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, staff, and residents of the Town of Pelham. Um, Thank you for this opportunity to give you a presentation today <clears throat> regarding the gypsy moth uh, issue that is facing the town of Pelham. Uh, again, my name is Jason Marr. I'm the director of Public Works. Uh, started with the town last November, so I've been here a short period of time. Um, I am a resident of Pelham as well. And up until this spring, I did not know what a gypsy moth was. Um, needless to say, I know very well what the gypsy moth is now. So it's, uh, it's been a very eye-opening experience for me. Um, and just to you know, let you know as well, uh, as a resident, that I know um, there, is a, there is a serious issue here that we need to address. Okay, so I'll try to make this as brief as possible. What I'd like to do, basically give a description of the gypsy moth. I think I can go pretty quick through that. I'm sure everybody here in attendance knows exactly what the gypsy moth is. I want to go through a little bit of uh, how climate change plays into this, what the town's doing to, to, to counteract that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the gypsy moth timeline. Again, I said I've been here since November. Uh, but this has been an ongoing issue for the town of Pelham for some time. Um, more specifically, I know a lot of residents here will have interest in how the 2019 program uh, was administered and, and laid out. And so I'll touch on the timeline on how that came to be, what happened. And the reason why, from my, from my opinion, the reason why we were here today is to make sure that the residents of Pelham voice their concerns, um, voice their ideas, and give council direction on how you would like to see a program move forward for the control of gypsy moss and other invasive species as well. Um, when you walked in, you'll see that there's six alternatives that are along the side of the wall here. Um, those were prepared by staff and presented to council in September with respect to some ideas on how we can move forward with a, with a program. Um, these aren't set in stone. Uh, in fact, I think they are um, working documents and, and we'll be looking towards uh, comments and feedback from the public um, to kind of shape which way we go here and how we, how we handle future programs. So what is a gypsy moth? Well, the gypsy moth, in plain English, is a nuisance pest. Um, it starts as a caterpillar, goes through four stages. It starts as a caterpillar. It feeds on the canopies of the trees. It grows to about five to six inches in length. It has different colored dots, five pairs of blue dots, six pairs of red. Hair, not a very pleasant looking specimen. Um, and they drop their feces all over, all over cars, driveways, pools, and make a complete mess. And what, they, what do they like to feed on? Well, specifically they like oak trees, okay? Um, this, is, this is their most preferred species. However, uh, once the infestation levels come to get to a certain point, uh, they'll attack anything. Um, on my property, uh, I don't have any oak trees, I have maples, and 
Again, lived there for, for 10 years. Never saw a gypsy moth until this year. They were all over my maple tree this year. Two maple trees on my property. So they'll attack anything. Um, usually the outbreak, uh, the eggs will hatch in April to mid-May. That's when the caterpillars will come out. <clears throat> You'll see in this photograph, uh, this is uh, just the hatching of, of new caterpillars on a tree. Um, they'll hatch, again, like I said, end of April, mid-May, and they'll start feeding. They'll feed for about seven weeks. It makes it difficult to control the gypsy moth uh, uh, outbreaks because it does fluctuate. It is um, basically a roller coaster, right? So in every, any given year, you don't know what the infestation level is going to be like. So it makes it very difficult for staff um, to administer and, and prepare and plan for a program um, to, to combat these, uh, the gypsy moth. So there are biological controls uh, naturally that occur that will um, act to suppress gypsy moth infestations. Um, there's fungal uh, pathogens, viruses, predators such as wasps will, will feed on the gypsy moths. <clears throat> Unfortunately, those controls alone, when you get to a certain point of an infestation, are effective uh, to, to combat it. So as a result, uh, there is a, uh, an alternative to use a biological agent called BTK, 4A48B. And this is a spray. This is a, this is a chemical that's naturally occurring in soils, which is used to spray the canopies of the trees that attack the gypsy moth uh, during their feeding cycle of seven weeks. It is a very short window when this chemical will actually work. Um, it is very safe. It's not harmful to humans, pets, uh, other animals, or insects. Um, and in fact, uh, the timing of it is very critical because it, it, the gypsy moth caterpillars are, um, there's about a two week, three week range where that BTK will strictly affect those moths, those caterpillars. And what it does is it basically enters the moth system and causes disruptions to the digestive system of the moth, and that's what kills it. Um, Again, like I said, it's very, uh, very time sensitive. Um, there needs to be at least two applications. Uh, those applications happen between 10 and 14 days apart, and that's what you aim for. As well, once the caterpillars get to a certain age and growth, um, the, the chemical is not effective uh, to, control, to control the caterpillar. So at the town of Pelham, we understand that climate change uh, is an issue. Um, the third bullet down, you'll see, uh, we're looking at changes to the climate will foster infestations such as the gypsy moth in the future. Um, so we don't see the, the issue uh, getting better on its own. And the town is taking proactive steps um, to combat this. Um, recently, we've retained the services, or we've, hi we've hired a climate uh, change coordinator and that position uh, is working with the town to, to bring an adaption plan in place where the town can uh, work to adapt towards the climate changes that are coming our way. And just the control of the gypsy moth is just one of those, uh, one of those things that we'll be looking at as part of that program. The, uh, the timeline that I've got in front of you starts in May of 2008. Um, I also understand that there was programs that were, were administered through the town previous to this time, um, but we don't have any rec records for those programs. We understand that there was uh, infestations, severe infestations in, in the mid-80s and early 90s, and we're unsure, staff, if there were spray programs administered during that period of time. What we do know is that in May 2008, an aerial spray program was administered in Hillcrest Park. It also uh, included some of the budding property owners that backed onto Hillcrest Park. Um, the cost for this program was in the range of uh, $6,000. Uh, 
And just to note that there was uh, no charge to the property owner, individual property owners for this spray. In May and June of uh, uh, 2009, um, we conducted a more complete spray program, very similar to the one we completed in 2019 this past year. That spray program involved 105 acres, uh, and that involved roughly 255 uh, private and public properties. Uh, the cost of this program was very similar to what we had just previously completed this past year, roughly around 100,000. And again, once again, this program was not um, was was funded completely through the town through excess reserves that were in place um, during that operating year. Between 2009 and 2017, uh, there was no programs administered by the town. Like I said, the infestation uh, of the gypsy moth is cyclical, um, it comes and goes. Um, in June of 2017, the town started to receive complaints regarding uh, the gypsy moth problem. Uh, town staff did assess uh, the trees in the infested areas that were in place in uh, 2008, uh, namely Hillcrest Park. Um, no action was taken in 2017 to spray. Fast forward to 2019. Um, sorry, 2018, uh, Council did approve a program uh, for an aero spray of Hillcrest Park. Uh, it roughly included uh, 6.47 acres of public property and 2.77 acres of private property. Uh, the cost of this program was uh, just under $7,500. Um, and again, uh, private landowners were not asked to contribute to the cost of the spraying program. <coughs> Based on the number of complaints that were received in 2017 and 2018, uh, the staff requested a budget of $25,000 as part of the 2019 operating program uh, to develop, to complete an infestation survey and to develop a spray program. The budget was uh, approved late, well, sorry, early in 2019. Um, in the winter. The, uh, so staff were under the gun to try to get a spray program off once the budget was approved. A report went to council requesting uh, council to consider sole sourcing uh, the contract for completing the infestation survey and getting a spray program up and going. Uh, we contracted that service and started right away to administer a program. There was a bylaw that was passed uh, that by council giving staff the authority to go ahead and spray without receiving individual consent from property owners. When we did the infestation surveys, we identified uh, both town-owned properties as well as uh, private properties. Um, and, and we focused on areas that were moderately and severely infested. So um, there were certain thresholds uh, that, we, that we worked towards and only those areas that were moderately and severely infested were identified as areas that um, needed to be sprayed to control the gypsy moth outbreak. So the total for this program was roughly 161 acres, approximately $90,000 to complete. Uh, of that, there was about $10,000 that was associated with um, coordination and consultation, uh, marketing of that program. There's 52.7 acres uh, of uh, town lands and unopened road allowances that were included as part of that. And there was 108.5 acres of private property that was sprayed within the urban boundary. And that included approximately 294 properties. Due to the unavailability of funds as part of the 2019 um, operating reserve, um, Ta staff presented council with a report uh, recommending that we move forward with the spray program and that those costs for spraying the private properties within the urban boundary would be passed back on to that individual residence. And that was approved by council as a method to move forward with the 2019 program. 
Also um, of note is that the distribution of those bills, of the amounts for the individual property owners was based on uh, the property itself. It wasn't based on an acreage. Um, it was based on, the, it was basically the value of that spray program was divided equally amongst those 294 uh, benefiting property owners. The last point um, on this slide, I think it's important to note that uh, based on the results uh, from the spray program that was administered, uh, staff as well as our consultants are very confident that the program was very successful. I know there's different opinions on how successful that program was, um, but uh, at the end of the day, um, I believe that the program that was administered um, did help to preserve and protect the urban canopy in those areas. So how are we going to move forward? Um, again, the idea here is to, to get input, feedback from the residents, from the public, and, and give staff and council some direction on how you would like to see the program move forward. Six alternatives on the side of the wall here. Okay, like I said, these were developed by staff just to give council some idea on what would be possible, what, what they could consider, and we're looking to hear back uh, some positive feedback from the public tonight on which alternatives, which components of those alternatives you like, which alternatives you like, and kind of give us some direction on how we move forward. So at this point in time, I'll quickly step through what each alternative is to let you know what they, what they mean. So the first alternative is basically the town of Pelham completes an infestation survey of a municipal property and sprays only municipal property with moderate to severe infestation. This alternative would be funded through the general tax base. So in this case, we would do an infestation survey on town properties and we would take care of town properties. We'd only spray town properties. I'm not gonna go through the pros and cons. Um, they are on the slides and I'll, I'll, I'll I think with, with respect to timing, I'll just go through the alternatives and let you know what each one kind of represents. The second alternative we provided was that the town of Pelham completes uh, gypsy moth infestation surveys. We spray the entire urban boundary uh, when infestation levels meet moderate to severe limits. Uh, this alternative would be funded through the general tax base as well. So um, the idea here is that uh, the rural group, anything outside of the urban boundary, the urban, the rural area in 2019 had contracted a contractor directly to, to spray their property. So the town, I want to be clear, the town wasn't involved with any programs outside of the urban area. Um, there were a few properties that abutted the urban boundary, which were included as part of that spray block. Um, but in essence, anything outside of the urban area was, was completed. Um, individually through the private uh, property owners through the through a contractor <clears throat> so basically in this alternative uh, we would spray the uh, entire urban boundary and we would pass the cost back on to the general tax base um, based on the estimations we have with respect to um, rates for that area that size of, of a spray um, the, the cost for that would be roughly a million dollars to spray our entire urban boundary. So I believe that represents close to an eight to 10% tax increase just to spray for gypsy moss in the urban boundary. One alternative that's not on here is to do a blanket spray of the entire town, which seems a little bit absurd. Um, the cost for that would be estimated to be around 4.5 million. So um, that wasn't uh, looked at as uh, even a viable option. Alternative three, uh, we would complete an infestation survey and we would spray public properties and private properties within or adjacent to an urban boundary with moderate to severe infestation. Again, this would be funded through the general tax base. So in this case, we're spraying private properties, public properties based on severe and moderate infestation and the cost gets spread around um, the, the general tax base. So. Uh, 
one of the points here, our program this year was based on roughly 110 acres of urban area. Um, so we're estimating, worst case scenario, we'd be around that $125,000 range uh, to take care of moderately and severely infested properties that the town owns, as well as the urban areas that need to be sprayed. Alternative four, we would spray the uh, public and private properties within or adjacent to the urban boundary, again, with moderate to severe infestation. And the cost of that spraying of private properties would be equally distributed amongst the tax base within the urban boundary. So what that means is if the rural residents are taking care of their own spray programs, then in this situation, we, again, we would look at uh, spraying moderately severely infested properties within the urban boundary. The town would cover their portion for their properties. The remaining portion that gets sprayed in the urban area would be spread amongst <coughs> an urban tax base. At this point in time, we don't know what the actual urban tax base is. Uh, we don't have that information. We would have to um, develop that, that information, um, but that could be a possibility. Alternative five, we would spray private and public properties throughout the urban and rural areas with moderate to severe infestation, and the cost would be equally distributed throughout the entire town's tax base. So, same situation as alternative four, except this time we would spread it over the entire tax base for the town of Pelham. And um, the issue with that is that, uh, you know, you're spraying now rural properties that we have to, uh, that we have to um, assess as being moderately severely infested. Um, so the cost for that could go upwards of 350000 That's just a guess. Uh, we wouldn't know until we uh, did our infestation surveys and determined the level of infestation. But uh, based on this year's program, the urban area was in the order of uh, $90,000. And um, I don't have the exact numbers, but we are estimating that the rural program that was completed outside of the town was a roughly 400 to 500 acres. So um, that was roughly um, $200,000 complete for the spray that was administered in the town of Pelham this year. So, we anticipate if, uh, if, if levels increased, the upwards end of that could be around $350,000. And then finally, alternative six, the, the town would spray only municipal, prop, only municipal property with moderate and severe infestation, so very similar to alternative one. However, the town would work to subsidize um, the cost of the coordination and administration of the spraying of private properties. So we would, we would still be responsible for doing all the infestations, developing a spray program. Um, but in this case, would be very similar to uh, what was completed this year in the sense that the cost for the actual spraying of the urban private properties would be um, placed back onto those individual property owners. So thank you, that's, that's basically what I have. Um, again, I just, as the Director of Public Works, uh, this year was a very eye-opening experience for me uh, with respect to how much nuisance a pest can actually provide for a town. Um, my staff have expended exorbitant amount of resources uh, regarding this issue. Um, we do know it, it, it is a major issue, and um, from my personal opinion, um, I'm hoping to get some good feedback and comments tonight so that we can move forward as a group towards a solution that makes my life a lot easier. Um, so I'm definitely in, uh, in support of that. So thank you. So at this point, um, we will ask, is there any council, any councillors that have uh, questions uh, they would like to ask the director at this time? This is just to the, uh, the council members. Any council members? Yes, uh, Council Trophy. Yeah, through, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question would be to uh, Paul from Trees Unlimited, if that's okay at this time. Sorry, sorry, I can't, uh, I, I couldn't hear that. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Yeah, my question through you, Mr. Mayor, would be to uh, 
Paul from Trees Unlimited in regards to this uh, presentation, if that's allowed. Uh, uh, yes, Paul said he would uh, uh, answer any questions, so uh, go ahead. Okay, I'm looking at page eight of the report, and uh, for this year, April 2019, the total cost was approximately $89,000 to spray 161.2 acres. Now, it's broken down here. Um, there's approximately $12,000 of town parks and unopened road allowances, and it was approximately 52.7 acres. The urban and private area was approximately 68,000, and it was 108.5. I just want to know how we get the breakdown for uh, the pricing there. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So, with respect, sorry, yeah. I'll, I'll let Paul. I'll let Paul speak. Um, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So, the the cost um, for the municipal properties that the town has um, some of those 30 acres of that of that 40 acres that the town was responsible for was in an urban area. Um, a lot, the urban properties that are being sprayed um, are in a higher density area that require different types of aircraft to administer the spraying. They require a double engine aircraft, uh, whereas the rural properties require a single uh, engine aircraft. And the, uh, the, the costs are significantly different with respect to um, the, admi the administration of that spray program using those different pieces of equipment. Would would you be able to break it down for the aircraft then, how much it would be for urban and how much it would be for the rural area? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I know that um, the cost for the urban spraying was in the order of $625 per acre. That was the cost that was provided by our consultant um, to administer that spray program. And those are the areas in the, in the high density areas in the urban, within the urban boundary. Um, I believe there also is a, I don't have the exact breakdown with me now with respect to the, um, the areas within the rural area, but um, I think on average they are roughly around $175, $150 to $175 per acre. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, just one more thing on that. Um, being a counselor in Ward 1 in the rural area, I've had uh, residents paying $560 for one to three acres. So that $150 an acre is way off. And I'm, this question is directed to Paul from Trees Unlimited. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the way the rural program works is for, there are certain elements that need to be done regardless of the size of the acreage. So in every year that we have done spraying in 30 years, we've had a base price for the first three acres. In this case, it was roughly $500. So whether or not you own one acre or one and a half or three and a half or 2.99, if you're under three acres, it's the same price for everybody. So then how do we come up with $150 per acre for the rural area? Well, once you get above three acres, the acreage drops dramatically to 100 to 95 and $90 an acre. So if you have 100 acres, it works out to be less than $100 an acre to spray. So then everybody that lives along Camborough Road, which was designated rural, and they possibly have three quarter to an acre lot, we're all being charged $560. No, that's not correct. There were some landowners who were charged. There were, so after meeting with some landowners in the Fenwick area and their acreage being less than half an acre, we had a price for, I think it was 375 if you were less than half an acre. And if you were between half an acre and one acre, I think it was 425. And then if you were over that, it was 500. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Corey? Yes, um, to, through you, Mr. Mayor, through the director. Are we looking at spraying next year? Sorry, I think the, it's hard to hear. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, are, are, are you looking at spraying the areas next year? So through you, Mr. Mayor, um, 
we understand, uh, staff understands that um, the program uh, was very rushed this year. Um, in fact, we were uh, very lucky to get a program off um, at all. One thing I'd like to say is that um, I can't say for certain uh, if we, or definitively, if we'll be spraying next year, although my personal opinion on this is we most likely will have some type of spray program. Um, we did receive approval uh, from council to competitively retain uh, the services of a forestry consultant uh, to complete an infestation survey of town property uh, and the urban area this uh, coming fall. So that RFP uh, request for proposal um, is almost complete. It is ready to be uh, put out on the street. Um, we're expecting that that RFP goes out uh, to, the, to the market uh, by the end of this week. And we're hopefully have, we'll have a consultant retained uh, to conduct an infestation survey this fall uh, within the next month. And the idea, the plan is, uh, through you Mr. Mayor, the plan is to have a report back by the end of the year that we can bring to council that will show uh, what the level of infestation is uh, based on the egg masses that they see uh, once the leaves fall and that way we'll determine uh, the what type of program spray program will be required and the level that we pursue that through you mr mayor to the director will we be putting out a rfp for the spring th next year uh, yes through you mr mayor so um because we don't know, as staff, we don't know which way uh, we're going to proceed with uh, a spray program and the extent that we will be um, proceeding with. It was our idea that, and our thought that um, it's best to go ahead and do the infestation survey now to find out what the impact will be next year. So find out what, find out what the level of infestation is. We're gonna set, send out a separate RFP this fall to complete that task. Once we have that information, um, pending a budget approval and, and which way we decide to move forward, uh, we will uh, issue a separate RFP uh, in the winter uh, to develop uh, to a consultant that will be able to develop an actual spray program with the information that we gained from this fall's infestation survey. So yes, the answer is yes. And through you, Mr. Mayor, through the director, what are you looking at as a budget what, that, would, what, that would not get us in the same situation that we're in this uh, this year? Are you looking at 150, 200? Through you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. And, and excuse me, and there's a part B. Would we start putting a reserve for this issue? Uh, through, you, through you, Mr. Mayor. So this is a, this is a, a question, um, this is a decision that needs to be made by council with respect to uh, the level of funding and what type of program we're put, we put forward. Um, Based on this year's program, um, in order to completely fund uh, an urban spray program, uh, treating moderately and severely infested properties that the town owns as well as infested uh, private properties adjacent to those uh, public properties, it would be in the order, in my estimation with uh, coordination, would be in the order of $100,000 to complete that and pay for that program, similar to what we did this year. If you, if you decide to um, entertain uh, larger areas or, in, in fact, um, uh, do infestation surveys and complete spray programs in the rural areas, then uh, those, uh, those numbers will go up significantly. Yep. Oh, wait. Any, any other questions down here? Okay, go, go ahead, Council Trophy. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. I didn't quite pick up on that. Did you say that the RFP was already issued for the infestation uh, consultant? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, no, that is not correct. Uh, the RFP is in draft form. Uh, we're hoping to get that uh, RFP out on the market by the end of this week. So we're very close to getting it out. Through you, Mr. Mayor, would that mean that we would be able to get the information back prior to budget? So we know rough or what we need to allow in our budget? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, no, we will not be able to um, get that information back in time for 
the operating budget to be um, presented to you. We're expecting to get the uh, the report back from the consultant. The earliest we get it, something to council would be in early January. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I guess this will go to uh, the CAO. How would we uh, allow money for this once we have that report back in January? Well, depending on the wishes of council. Council will have options um, when we sort of hear from the public tonight and perhaps that guides which of the alternatives we're looking at and going to focus on, that, that dictates quite significantly price. There's an enormous swing and really it, it has to do with whether we're going to put most of the cost collectively on the taxpayers as sort of a municipal insurance program or whether it's going to be a user pay system. That's really what we're talking about. Um, but we could put a placeholder amount in a, you, you can pass a budget without knowing how much exactly that's going to cost. You could put 100,000, 50,000, 150,000. Those are sort of range numbers. Uh, or in the alternative, you can simply pass the bare amount we know we need, we believe we need for the works. Again, we don't have the data back from this fall survey yet, but anticipating some need, uh, you put in just a very minimal amount and we can plan to have a budget variance. Uh, there are a number of ways to proceed. Our treasurer will give you very good advice when it comes to that moment when you're in budget deliberations. But frankly, council has a number of choices. Uh, the higher the number you put in, the higher the tax increase. But of course, the more money set aside to do that. Uh, and if not done that year, that could go into effectively a reserve for future sprays. So it, you have choice and ultimately control over that. Thank you. Oh, oh uh, Council Wink. So through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we sprayed about 160 acres uh, this past year. Will those, will that acreage have to be uh, redone again next year, or how effective is was that spray? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> I might look towards uh, my manager of public works as well to comment. But um, the spray that was completed this year was effective and um, controlling the infestation that was occurring this year. Um, until we know, until we do the infestation survey to find out uh, the number of egg masses that are in the trees, determine the level of infestation, uh, we'll determine, obviously, if there will be a spray program next year. Um, basically, um, you know, and, and once we get that information, we'll be able to comment uh, better on that. Um, the areas that we did spray have historically been the areas that have been sprayed. Um, so, again, a lot of things play into the control of this, uh, of this pest. Um, environmental factors such as uh, uh, damp uh, springs, uh, falls, um, that'll help promote uh, fungus and virus that act actively kills these, uh, the gypsy moths. Uh, but in my estimation that uh, there will be some type of uh, spray program performed in those same areas again next year. I just don't know what the level, uh, what the extent will be until we do that survey. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, uh, go ahead, Councilor. Uh, this question would be to uh, Paul from Trees Unlimited. And I'm not sure if it's possible, but they said there was approximately 400 to 500 acres that were sprayed in the rural area at a cost of $200,000. Would we be able to get a breakdown of the size of the properties and the number of the properties? You can leave the names out for confidentiality. Would that be something that you could provide us? Yes. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just to, just to clarify that, um, the town, the town staff were involved with the program that was administered in the rural area, and um, our estimation is that there was 400 uh, to 500 acres that were sprayed as part of that program. We don't know for sure, and based on um, based on the rate, we don't know the we don't know the actual cost of that program that was administered in the rural program. We don't have, uh, we're not privy to that information. Um, our estimates based for these alternatives were based on what we thought would be a reasonable rate for a rural spray program based on based upon uh, uh, 400 to 500 acres. 
So. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's fine. Thank you for the explanation. I just want to make sure that uh, everybody in the rural area and the urban areas are being charged uh, approximately the same amount or fair. We are very careful. Everyone is, is, is charged the exact same price no matter what it was per acre. The only time we adjusted the two acreage when it was below the one and below the 0.5 of an acre, and that was at the request, well, we were speaking with landowners and we thought that was fair and so did the town and so that's what we ended up doing. But everyone else is identical, okay? Uh, any other questions, uh, Councillor? No, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, so not seeing any more questions. We're good. Not seeing any more questions from Council. Uh, we will now open it up to the uh, fee registered um, speakers. I, I guess before I do, I just one little thing. Um, that they were talking about double engines and, and single engines uh, and, it's, and, the, and the cost difference. Whenever you're doing an urban area, it's a government regulation that you have to use a twin engine helicopter for safety reasons. One engine goes out, you still have another engine. When you're doing rural, you can get away with just a single engine and, and, the, and as the, the staff pointed out, there's a substantial difference between using the double and the single engine. But it's a government regulation that decides where you use what machine. Just thought I'd throw that in. Okay. Oh, I'll find my glasses right here. Thank you. So we have a uh, recommendation put forward by Councillor Wink. The committee received the Gypsy Moth public meeting presentation dated October 23rd, 2019 by Jason Marr, Director of Public Works and Utilities Department. Any further discussion on the presentation? Not seeing then, uh, not seeing any, I call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Recommendation passes, thank you. Yep. Yes. Okay. So now we move to the uh, public input part of the uh, evening. 6.1 is a request to reopen Gypsy Moth funding options by, uh, by Jen Pilzecker. Is, is she still? She's yep, here. there she is. Thank you. Yes, uh, that one. And please uh, state your name uh, for the record, please. I'm, I'm shorter than this. Uh, my name is uh, Jen Pilzecker, and uh, I'm a resident of Font Hill. Um, thank you for um, uh, this opportunity tonight, Council. Um, I was a little surprised to find my name on the agenda. Uh, I was a little surprised to find my name on the agenda. I did put in a request to appear in front of council August 23rd to speak to what is on um, the agenda tonight. Uh, and I uh, haven't actually been in touch with anyone since September, so bear with me. Um, I'm just pulling up the presentation that I prepared uh, on funding considerations and options. I appreciate the fact that we're looking to move forward um, for <coughs> looking for a better way to do things in future years. Uh, however, uh, a very wise individual told me just this week um, in the situation of Gypsy Moss and the spray program that took place in 2019, uh, a lot of council may feel like they're done with the past, but I don't think the past is necessarily done with you. And I think you're gonna hear from a lot of people tonight uh, about some of their situations uh, and concerns um, that maybe their properties didn't meet the criteria set out by you in the bylaw for the spray. Uh, and, uh, and there were so many issues that I will not speak to, I will let other people speak to them. But uh, tonight I will, um, say that I do believe there were options for funding the 2019 spray program 
that may not have been considered uh, back in May when they um, when staff was putting together recommendations for how to pay for this program. I understand we made the decision as a town to move ahead with a, a fairly broad spray program that included private properties, unbeknownst to many of those private properties. Uh, and um, uh, council at that time didn't know how they were going to pay for that program, pay for those services. So the program was implemented and it was a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction to come up with funds uh, to pay. Um, I, uh, I've been uh, looking at some of the budget items uh, in 2019. I do know that we have some unspent grant money uh, that is in our, cap uh, I think it's our capital budget, might be our operating budget, but regardless, um, unspent grant monies that uh, could have been used to create overlap. We've done some improvements on town hall, uh, the roof, the painting, all those were um, eligible for funding under the Main Street Revitalization Grant that we have $52,800 sitting there right now that needs to be spent by March 2020. I'm not sure if uh, staff notified council of uh, the criteria of this grant, uh, but there were many things that we've spent other monies on this year already that could have been um, paid for through this grant. And there are uh, many other uh, little cost saving um, uh, ways. Uh, there are a lot of ways we could create overlap in uh, the capital budget to uh, find some funds. It may not all come from one source, uh, but if you can find $1,000 here and there, $10,000 here and there, uh, it all adds up. And, uh, and I think that's important to look at and consider. Also, since May 2019, uh, we've, thanks to the hard work of uh, some members of this council, I think Bob Hildebrandt is on the committee that found um, some hydro savings in our operating budget uh, for this year, which has created um, a surplus. And uh, I think the, the town is grateful for, uh, for the hard work of uh, those people who found that, uh, perhaps some of that um, money can be used to pay for uh, this this program that um, a town initiated for the, the benefit of the community as a whole. Uh, it, uh, it was to protect our community trees. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why they chose to include certain uh, private urban properties, some which didn't have trees, uh, some, but uh, I think that goes beyond what we have to address now. The fact is the spray's been done. We have bills to pay. We probably already paid some of them. Uh, council chose to build, build 294 individual residents for the full amount of the private urban spray program that they initiated without giving those private property owners an opportunity to opt out or in for that matter, but uh, if they wanted their property sprayed, uh, they could have contracted just like rural property owners with uh, a private contractor, uh, but they were not given that opportunity. Um, and, uh, and no documentation has been given to these private property owners that a spray of their property was complete, that they met the threshold criteria for um, set out in the bylaw that states that their property was severely infested uh, and that threshold criteria I believe is I think our threshold criteria is much lower by five five times or so than other municipalities in the province of Ontario most of them set it at 2,500 egg masses per hectare and uh, here I think we set it at 500 uh, but many of the properties didn't even meet that uh, so I'd like to know if the town has documentation to back that up. Um, that was a question actually I was going to ask, not part of my presentation, so I apologize. I uh, digress. Um, so to conclude, I would like to just say that I think the town has opportunity to fix what's been done in 2019 from a billing perspective. I don't think it's as difficult and daunting 
as it may appear. Uh, I think there are many uh, opportunities to find funds uh, through many different avenues. It might take a couple days looking at some budgets, but it, it wouldn't take months. It would be fairly minimal time to come up with the funds to cover the nearly $80,000 for the uh, private properties that were included in the town initiated spray. So uh, thank you for your time and um, hopefully we'll hear some from some people tonight with uh, maybe some better ideas, but uh, that's what I came up with, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and not being the bad guy here, this meeting was about that, but let me, I'll, I'll take a crack at what you said. I appreciate what you said. We realize there's a lot of people here that, uh, that, that weren't happy with the 200 uh, of the 294 people. Yes, we have gotten numerous uh, emails that the residents weren't happy. I also have gotten numerous emails from people who were upset that they were not sprayed, uh, that they were not in the uh, spray zone because they realized that the $260 was indeed a bargain. And we also had numerous, lots of emails from people who were very happy with the program. They we saved their trees the year before. They had seen utter devastation. And this year, they, 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 um, they were very appreciative of the town doing that. On the same side, uh, of course, hindsight's pretty easy. I mean, we're out in April, we're, uh, we're in uh, October. Back in, when this was being discussed in council, back in February, January, we were under financial constraints like this town has never known. Uh, we hadn't, uh, we did not have the money to do this. We did not have $100,000. We went up and down the council, we voted, and, and we said, no, we do not have the money in the budget. We were under a biological uh, deadline. We, we, we it had to be done in a certain time in May. And in order to get it sprayed, we had a government regulation that said that we had to have the, the, the maps and the blocks all in, uh, figured out because you have to have, it's a government regulation, you have got to register a flight plan. So we had those three big deadlines staring at us uh, if we were going to do anything. Biological, the government needed to know where we were going to spray, and we did not have the $100,000. We, we cut $100,000 off of rural ditching last year, for one example. We didn't go out, we didn't do any ditching. Staff, when they uh, took their original budget, they knocked four and a half million dollars off of that. They brought that to council and they said, this is all we can do, you guys will have to do better. We went line by line, I would think maybe eight or nine hours, and we chopped off another $275,000. And that was it. That, and, and then the question came up, what are we gonna do with Gypsy Moth? Are we, uh, do we, do we what, what, the, the options were limited, I, I'm sorry, but it, it wasn't. It was, it was limited. We, we voted as a council, and, and, and that vote is going to stand. Uh, was it the right thing to do? We thought it was. Uh, we were elected to make the decision. We made the decision. Yes, we, there's more money now, and going forward, uh, I, I, I hope we don't do this again. I, I hope now we, we've got some money in the budget. We've, uh, we're getting things straightened around here in the town. Uh, we revamped the, uh, the, uh, the, the matrix that runs this building. Uh, we did the manpower. We're saving about 250, 300,000 a year just on that. So yes, now we've got some leeway. So what we have to decide tonight, without worrying about history, because I can tell everyone right now, we are not gonna go back. Uh, if that pisses everybody off, I'm sorry, but we made the decision and we're gonna to stick to it. So if we wanna get moving ahead, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, tell us which one you like. We're elected by you, and, and that's what we will do. If, if you wanna spend 350,000 a year and spray the whole urban area, we'll do it, it's a waste of money. Obviously, no one's gonna do that. 
but we are now in a position that, that we do have, we can play around a bit. We, we, we're getting better here. But last spring, when we, did the, when we the, deliberated the budget, we did not have any wiggle room. I'm sorry. That's, that's just the way it was. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Jen, for your presentation. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Recommendation put forward by Councillor Hildebrand that committee receive the delegation by Jen Pilzucker, I'm sorry if I don't get your name right, regarding Gypsy Moth funding for information. Um, all those in favor? All those against? Thank you. Uh, next speaker is the suggestions for effective Gypsy Moth Spray Control Program. And uh, I call this guy the Mr. Gypsy Moth of Pelham. Uh, I've sat down with him. He has records. Uh, he's got files, an inch and a half thick. Uh, he's very knowledgeable and in, in, individual. And uh, I uh, believe it's uh, Frank Freely's turn to talk. Mr. Mayor, members of council, town staff, and citizens of Pelham. Hey, Frank, you gotta get the mic, please. Thank you. How's that? First off, I wish to congratulate you, Mr. Mayor, and council for holding these public meetings. You have held three meetings, I think, in the last two or three weeks. In my recollection, is that the town has never held a public meeting in the last 40 years. My name is Frank Feely, and I have been a resident of Blackwood Crescent, Budding Hillcrest Park, for the last 45 years. I prepared and presented a 20-page white paper to the town in September, outlining how the town has handled the gypsy moth infestation from 1990 to the present, including recommendations for the future. All data in this white paper came from official town records. I reviewed well over 200 reports, letters, property tax records, website notifications, and emails to and from the town. It was supplemented with discussions with various MNR officials, in addition to reviewing Toronto and Hamilton Gypsy Moths websites and discussing their problems with this. I also talked to a major Mississauga firm whose clients, uh, a firm primarily dealing with Gypsy Moth infestation. Uh, who had clients in Toronto, Mississauga, Oakville, Hamilton, Ancaster, Dundas, Flanborough, and others, and I provided these contract, contacts to the town. My presentation this evening highlights a brief history from 1990 to 2018, and then in greater detail, as to what has occurred in 2019. I think I'm going to have to depart from a lot of uh, this information because there is a time limit um, and I will go uh, basically right now to um, the recommendations that I had presented to the town back on September 4th. Um, but that's in the spirit of goodwill because I'm a firm believer that the community benefits from having 
a very good tree saving program, if I can say that. When it comes, oh, first off, we live in a lovely community. I applied, applaud all those citizens who volunteer their time and talent to make the town serving various committees uh, to make their commitment uh, to this and to make the community better. Even our fire hall is staffed with volunteer fire halls, fire fighters. When it comes to the health of the town, no, no one can dispute the value that these trees contribute to the overall beauty and health of our community. They reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Healthy trees provide a beautiful canopy for the citizens to enjoy. And like a rising tide, it increases the value of all properties within the community. One of our priorities in our town's mission statement is to protect our environmental assets. Trees in an urban setting get stressed from pollution, from vehicular traffic, salt from winter road sanders, and a multitude of other factors. When gypsy moth caterpillars defoliate uh, their leaves, it just adds more stress and exacerbates the problem. The town doesn't need the added problem of people getting injured, slipping, and sliding on the sidewalk of a carpet of caterpillar frass. Many municipalities have recognized the benefits of having and protecting the trees in the community. They have indicated monies in their operating budget to protect their, this asset, and I am advocating that the town can council do the right thing, <coughs> affecting, effective this year and years to come to provide monies to protect this asset uh, as they have done uh, in other municipalities in the past. Here are my recommendations. Establish a committee composed of senior staff, town councillors, and informed citizens to develop and recommend to council an, effect, an, an effective gypsy moth spray control program. The committee would meet regularly and retain oversight for the effective terms of the current council, including in, the, in its responsibility, but not limited uh, uh, to uh, the following. Ensure a program defines in detail threshold standards for spraying. Ensure standard practices are followed to obtain competitive quotes through RFPs. Find the size of residential lots in rural areas for gypsy moth spraying, which would or could be subject to the same conditions as urban property lots for spraying and develop a pricing formula for both of these groups if need be. Explore with other municipalities how they forecast operating budgets in, anticipating, in anticipation of their following year requirements. Since the gypsy moth infestation is cyclical, cyclical, explore the possibility of seeing setting aside reserve funds every year to offset a large budget increase in the year spraying is required. The current system is not working. The town says it does not have the resources or the capabilities to accurately and fairly determine in a timely manner the amount each resident should be billed based on the size of his or her property. Explore other possibilities, including incorporating the spray period, the spray program, into the town's operating budget. Ensure fairness in the billing process as opposed to a one price fits all. Instruct town staff to record citizens' complaints concerning uh, the program uh, and review um, same in each meeting. Now, I want to thank Ms. Pil uh, Pilzecker for stealing most of my uh, responses um, uh, that uh, I was going to address to the council. Um, but I will continue.
basically it boils down to this. The town has notified the MNR in early 1989 or early 90 that Hillcrest Park was severely infected. The town sent a letter to the residents surrounding uh, the park of this critical infestation and that the town would be spraying immediately and would continue spraying for several years. I still have those letters. I guess the town doesn't. After 1990, the town didn't, didn't do anything for 18 years. And we, bordering Hillcrest Park, suffered collateral damage of this inaction. Finally, in 2008, they sprayed Hillcrest Park and, a 30, and 30 feet of residential backyard surrounding the park. They were quoted $670 to spray the 5.6 acre park. We were told it was going to cost us $475 to spray a 30 foot strip abutting the Hillcrest Park. Trees Unlimited maintained that our properties were separate individual pieces of property and therefore uh, we were being charged 475 per acre or per 30 foot strip which turned out to be $14,700. The town <coughs> The town was able to reduce the price. The town was able to reduce the price to $157.50 by paying Trees Unlimited directly and billing each of us separately. This, this, this still worked out that we were paying $4,900 for 1.1 acre and the town was paying $670 for 5.6 acres. This, the town scheduled an information session to discuss our concerns, but nobody from the town showed up. They sent uh, Trees Unlimited. Eventually, the invoices were silently withdrawn when it was pointed out that the town had contravened their own requirements to have residents sign a waiver, and this never happened. In July 2008, 10 years later, the town reiterated their policy of not paying to spray private property as they were not about to get and set an unfavorable precedent by doing so. But 10 months later, they sprayed five urban neighborhoods in Font Hill and no one received a bill. In 2015, 16, and 17, the town was given multiple warnings from residents that the gypsy moths were back and devastating uh, the area, but nothing was done. They were even warned that Zimmer Air needed uh, the town to get their uh, order in early because 2018 was shaping up to be another bad year. 2018, the town sprayed Hillcrest Park, but um, weren't able to um, go any further because uh, the town failed to get this information to Zimmer Air on a timely basis to get a regulatory approval. Now we can turn to 2019, um, if time permits. First off, I said to uh, Bob Hildebrand, uh, I wanted to give special recognition to council um, Councillor Bob Hildebrand and the Chairman Gord Morasco for the fine job they did on the Su Sustainable Utility Advisory Committee in ferreting out errors in the utility uh, billings insulting in, in resulting in $400,000 in savings. It's when we review the past that we can improve the future. There are many challenges ahead of us and hopefully by grabbing the bull by the horns and looking backwards, we can 
thrust ourselves into the future. Paraphrasing what uh, Jen said, I remember my grandfather used to say, you may be done with the past, but the past isn't done with you. I would like to focus on the process and issues of transparency in this segment. On March 20th, the mayor said we had money to spray these dastardly pets, pests. On May 15th, the interim CEO said spraying is going to be put, was going to go forward, but we would sort out the numbers later. On April 26th, the town announced in its website that it would conduct an aerial spray program in an, in an effort to control the gypsy moth infestation, the fact that residents would pay to have their property sprayed was never stated, implied, or even hinted. In May 6th, council, in a council meeting, it was either Councillor Corr or Councillor Chofi who asked why wasn't there an RFP, a request for proposal sent out uh, on this file. On May 21st, senior staff reports to council contain many errors, omissions, and discrepancies. First, there was no RFP for the tender. The cost of spraying municipal pro property, they said, will be the responsibility of the town and will not be passed on to the property owners. Well, over 25% of the property charged to the residents appeared to be municipally owned property. Private urban residents would be charged to spray their property. Well, not really, because it was based on estimates, not actuals. And according to the town, it worked out on an average to be 0.37 acres per urban lot. In the voice, the town even acknowledged that the average urban size lot in Font Hill was less than 0.3 acres. I examined the actual lot sizes of more than 100 lots from town property tax records in urban spray areas and they averaged a bit less than 0.25 acres. So the town's estimate is 150 percent higher than actuals and as a result we are paying for that overestimation in our $260 invoice. So the town has overcharged the residents by about $48,000 by my estimation. We should have been charged $350 per acre like other municipalities, uh, Toronto, Hamilton, Oakville, etc. Apparently, we were paid, charged $625 uh, for the revised 73.5 acres instead of the 108.5 acres that they estimated. This brings the total invoice down to about $29,000 for all of us, uh, which is less than $100 per resident. It could be further reduced by taking rural properties that were included in the spray site, about uh, 17 acres. Uh, that would bring our total down to about 46 acres and reducing the bill to about 18000 or $63 per resident. While rural property owners were to contact and contract with Trees Unlimited directly to have their property sprayed, apparently some were included in the urban spray site. One such property uh, was, a, was a total acreage of 15 acres. According to the report, the town said the challenges was to arrive at an equitable sharing of the cost. But, there, but then the council passed a resolution that each resident would pay the same regardless of lot size. Look at Billy, Lookout Village uh, was an example. It had 150 owners and it covered seven acres but it only paid a total of $260, the same as everybody else. And yet many residents' uh, acreage was about 25 times smaller 
uh, than, um, than Lookout Village. The town bylaw states that only areas of severe infestation would be sprayed. The threshold for severe infestation has been accepted in industry in excess of 2,500 gypsy moth uh, egg masses per hectare. The town, however, defined it as 1,500 egg masses. Further, it contravened the town's bylaw uh, because it sprayed moderate and severely infested areas with moderate uh, infested areas deemed to be uh, at 400 egg masses. We are paying $625 per acre to have our property sprayed. We were quoted last year, it would be $350 an acre. That was on a press release on April 24th, I think 2018. This year, uh, I've got, nobody's explained that uh, uh, to me. Um, other municipalities, apparently this year, are still paying $350 an acre. Oh, and incidentally, a small group of residents did get their invoices reversed, uh, as I think previously mentioned. Uh, they wanted proof that their properties were sprayed and the town couldn't provide it. Some residents wanted to get sprayed, but couldn't. Others had professional tree surfaces spray them, and still others uh, didn't have any festation as they had trees, no trees, only flowers and garden shrubs. But no one could opt in or could opt out. I could go on, but why bore you with more details? It's safe to say that the town wants to put this behind us and move forward, while at the same time determined to resist all efforts to rectify this year's problems. I think we are here and want to move forward, but attempting to make a positive difference spelled out in your community uh, commitment statement, along with ignoring the legitimate concerns of these 294 residents, rings hollow beside the values of transparency and trustworthiness you have subscribed in your mission statement. Uh, I will leave it at that, and I can provide a copy of uh, my notes and presentation uh, to the town clerk if she so desires. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Frank, uh, for that. Uh, oh. So before we move on, recommendation put forward by Councillor Hahn that committee received the delegation by Frank Freely for information. All those in favor, all those opposed, motion carries. Uh, at, at this time, uh, it's not on the agenda, but we do have the uh, consultant that the town hired. And, and uh, Mr. Robinson, can I ask you to uh, uh, come to the podium? I, I saw you writing down figures. Uh, I was wondering if you, if you would, um, for lack of a better word, uh, have a uh, rebuttal uh, to perhaps some of the figures used by Mr. Creeley. Uh, or go ahead. And I'm sorry to do this. I, you didn't have any notice to come up to talk, and uh, I, I'm sorry to blindside you like that. Didn't even have a notice that there was the meeting. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> but uh, nice to see everyone. Um, <clears throat> sorry, on Councillor Kofi, on my response before, but I just want to make it clear. Uh, this is around our sixth infestation of gypsy moth. Many of the lion donors we spray, both in the urban as in rural, I've known for more than 35 years. Many of them I've sprayed more than six times if you say two applications we're into over a dozen applications many of them have been yes clients for a very long time but they've also developed to be friends so we we know from our other businesses that it's very important that we're transparent and so with that we treat everybody the exact same there is no side deals there's no 
your acreage is different from this person, you're in West Lincoln, you're in Haldeman, you're in Pelham, it is the exact same. Okay, so I just want to make that very clear for everyone that um, that's how we conduct business and that's how we treat everyone in Niagara. Um, regarding to Frank, uh, Mr. Freely, uh, I'm not going to rebut anything. He's very accurate, he is very knowledgeable, he has been involved with Gypsy Moth, um, again, right from the very beginning. He is correct, it started in 1989, 1990. Um, we actually did the spraying all through since the 1988. Um, I got started in Gypsy Moth with the Conservation Authority and at that time we were doing 25, 26,000 acres per season. So Gypsy Moth has reared its head. It's this infestation this year, we did about 22,000 acres and most of it was in six nations, but in the Niagara Peninsula, it was about 1,500 with about, yes, they're correct, around 400, 500 acres in Pelham but I'll get you the exact numbers and the number of landowners and what the gross revenues were from that. So that would help you budgeting forward. Um, I do have one other alternative, if I could. I'm not, uh, I think six is a lot, so having one more probably is not gonna be that big of a deal. But we were just talking, uh, Dan Hopped from Zimmer Air. We do have a copy of the combined aerial application, two applications on the board there. There is copies of the first and second application, so you can see. Um, they have not been altered, which some people have suggested. They are actually tracked, and this is the document that's provided to the Ministry of Environment and Conservation and Parks. It is a very legal document. It is very important that it is accurate and correct. Um, um, if So the other alternative is, again, if you're looking at if I could take a step back, when I met with the town back in January, um, Mayor uh, called me on January the 2nd. I think it was a Saturday morning. Um, and he said, we've got to get started on something around gypsy moth. Now, normally what we do with the gypsy moth infestation, and I'm being very frank with you, is we don't do anything until the first year of an infestation. It's impossible to convince people that they are gonna have an infestation coming up and that we're gonna pre-spray them and protect them. It, again, it doesn't work. It's, so often, yes, we're one year behind. Um, and so it's very easy to see the infestation, but it's also very easy for the landowners who are participating to understand the value of the spraying. So again, providing a second alternative there. So when we were looking at this, we were trying to set up what would be fair um, I'm a rural landowner. I have 74 sit acres. We didn't spray gypsy moth year, this year, but I have sprayed in the past. And so I understand the cost that comes to spraying. So we thought it was the best thing was a user pay. Okay, it, I, I, part, I was in favor of it. I suggested it possibly, I believe. <laughs> um, so to some respect, I am partially responsible for um, choosing that alternative but we thought it was the best thing to do. In the rural program, all of the landowners participated individually. So they paid individually, they approached us individually. Every landowner, the reason why there is a cost per landowner, because every landowner, because of the Ministry of Environment, we must have a signed contract. We must have, every property has to sign off to make sure that their neighbors within 100 meters are aware uh, that they're spraying. Is that correct? Did everyone have to do that? Was that a major hassle that you had to do? If you're in the rural program, not in the urban program, yes. okay? So that is where the cost comes in for each administering each program, each property regardless of the size. So in the urban program, we were trying to make it as fair and as equal as in, and as inexpensive as possible. So we just, yes, we, we sprayed. There is a difference between a twin engine aircraft and a single engine aircraft, it's about four times the cost per hour. Um, the aircraft flew directly from Hamilton to get here versus the single air, who was single engine, which was set up here. So again, there was cost incurred that are different for the urban program versus the rural. Um, one of the reasons why I suggested a, an, a cost um, recovery program is because that's what was going on in the urban program and the rural program, and I wasn't I, I didn't see how it was fair for someone 
to, um, to not to have the town pay their urban property, but in the rural situation, these landowners were having to pay for their own acreage. So in my rationale, that's why I suggested a user pay system. Now, if you're looking at a different alternative, one of them could be is, uh, yes, you look at the, inv I also suggest you do not spray anything unless it needs spraying. It doesn't make sense to spray anything above and beyond going corner to corner. So when we are setting up the spray program, we were looking at, in yes, in some cases, individual trees, but we looked at where you were in relationship to big oaks, big vulnerable trees, birch as well. And yes, there was the odd property that as the aircraft is flying from one area to the other, doing 100 kilometers an hour, 50 feet over top of the trees, it's impossible to miss property A that has very few trees. So in some cases, there was a blending of properties and um, it's not to say if you didn't have a tree, gypsy moth goes after everything, as you know. It'll go after your rose bushes, your, um, your shrubs, your conifers. So even though you may not have an oak or a birch, if the infestation is as high as it was, then you're going to get caterpillars all over your property. And, and yes, some of the properties we sort of judged what we thought was best. And in discussion with staff and, and council, we thought that this was the best location to put the spray block boundaries. Now, what I'm said one an alternative is if in the rural program in urban, if there is areas to be sprayed in the urban and there's areas to be sprayed in the rural, in the urban it is um, a residential lot is being sprayed. If you wanted to be sprayed in a rural situation, you could the town as part of the tax base could cover the cost of the house being sprayed because it is the most important part. And any additional forested acres for their woodlands and plantations, that would be on the cost of the landowner to cover those costs. So I'm just putting it out there as something that's, an, if you're going to try and impede some of the rural landowners that may not be in the room today, um, that is maybe one way they could be included in the program and have the township cover some of the costs as it's happening in the urban area. That's. I didn't bring any slides or anything. I didn't, if anyone has any questions, I'm willing to take them. Uh, Paul, maybe we'll, uh, if you can be kind of take your seat and then we'll have public speakers come up now. And uh, if we know you're available to answer, that'd be great. Thank you for that. Oh, glasses, so where are we? So now we're at, uh, yeah, so now we open it to the public. Okay, so uh, open it to the public. Uh, when you approach the microphone, uh, please state your name for the uh, record for, for the clerk. And remember, uh, you will hear a bell at two and a half minutes. And at three minutes, we uh, would appreciate it if you stop your presentation. But let's, let's see how that works. Oh, you, that mic bends. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Dave Nicholson, uh, resident of Pancake Lane, just opposite Hillcrest Park. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into the, the issue of whether or not uh, people should be uh, paying the bills as billed or not, because I think uh, there are going to be as many different opinions as there are people here. But what I do want to say is if there is an RFP going out in the next week for a, uh, a study of the infection intensity, may I make the suggestion that volunteers be considered because that must be extremely labor intensive work, but at the same time, I don't think it needs a degree in forestry to be able to count uh, the, egg, uh, the eggs on trees. So uh, I certainly would be willing to uh, offer uh, time as a volunteer, and I suspect that many other people too, and I think this could be a, a project with uh, definite value uh, of civic uh, participation by many different people. Great, thank you. Excellent idea. Okay, Mr. Mayor, uh, councillors, staff, I'm Jim Jeffs. Uh, up till now, I really knew nothing about gypsy moths, but after listening tonight, something that just strikes me, it's a simple thing, that when it comes to snow removal, if FEMA gets more snow than Fond Hill, there's no difference in cost. Jeff, in the mic, so, okay. Yeah. okay. Anyway, my point being that we're a town, we're in this together. So whether it's removal of snow or if there's a ditch on Poth Street that 
the culprits caved in, we all pay. So instead of getting into all this debate, why isn't just the municip municipality pays? Like we pay in our taxes, we pay together. Rather than trying to separate it out, you could separate it out. Fenwick may get a foot of snow and Fawn Hill itself may get uh, six inches. So do we figure out who gets the most snow and who should pay more? I mean, I just think there's just a lot of uh, unnecessary uh, discussion when, when they should be fairly simple, that's all. Wait, wait, wait. If I can address that, please. Uh, Jim, you were sitting here when I said that back in uh, January, February, this council, we, we went line for line. We did not have the $90,000. It was as easy as that. We do have wiggle room now. Will that program ever be repeated? I hope not. I hope from now on we will indeed do something uh, that will be from the tax base and, and it will be spread throughout the town. That was not the case. If you look at those alternatives, there's lots of room going ahead. Well, that is exactly what we're going to do. Thank you for that. Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to address council. Uh, my name is Rob Tiffin. I'm a Fond Hill resident. Um, I want to also speak to going forward, uh, but just as a comment, I would suggest that to council that they take the uh, report prepared by Mr. Feely and his comments, as well as the comments you have received from tonight, to perhaps use at your next retreat to think about your decision-making process and think about what transpired this past year and how you might have changed that and think about how that might factor into future decisions that the council may make. Um, certainly we do know that the, as we know, the gypsy moth infestation, it costs money. It costs money this year, it's gonna cost money over the next several years. Uh, we also know that the gypsy moth problem, as we've heard, is cyclical. So in some years it's going to cost more, some years less. And to echo the previous speaker's uh, comments, and it's my big feeling is that is, we are in this together. This is a community issue. Um, the, it only works for things such as our education system and for our health system because we're all in this together. We all have to pay for it. We may not like necessarily paying for it, but we do have to pay for it. So I guess I would recommend that this be distributed across the tax base. Um, I don't know about the rural versus urban. I, I do think that you know, in all likelihood, it, it should be all shared across the board for all both rural and urban properties. Um, but I also would recommend that you establish a, a reserve so that in some years you, you have the reserve to go to, and it may take you some time to actually establish the proper level of reserve. You're going to have to play around with it a little bit. But I'd much rather pay, I, I think not to give Justin, uh, he, I was asking, speaking with him earlier, and I asked how many uh, property owners do we have, and he gave me the figure 6,500, I won't hold him to it, but if the bill is 350,000, uh, 350, that works out to be $53. Well, that's better than paying 264. You know, and if we have a, uh, a, a operating reserve that's established, that will then address it going forward and we can get out of this mess altogether. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I, 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 if I can just say, uh, that uh, the building of the reserves is, is one of the main goals on this council and I can uh, assure you that uh, we, uh, in discussions with the treasurer, that going ahead, that is, ex even if we're not spraying, uh, let's say uh, 2021, there will be money set aside uh, for the next, not rainy day, but moth day. But, so I want <laughs> everyone to know that we are getting, uh, that that is a big thing going forward, is uh, we're not gonna do this last minute thing. We wanna get a plan in place that everyone's ha vast majority are happy and that council will know where we have to go down the road. So again, we, this is why we're having this meeting. Let's get a plan in place so the next time we have to do this, we're ready to go. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Hi, my name's Valerie Coffey and I live on Pancake Lane in Fawn Hill. Um, my question is, um, there's a map on the Fawn Hill Town of Pelham website and it shows in red who paid. It's on your website, so I'm sure you've all seen it. 
Um, <laughs> okay, so my question is, there's been a lot of talk about Hillcrest Park, which boundaries Blackwood, and yet when you look at that map, and I've talked to my neighbors, um, the people who are on the west side of Blackwood paid, the people on Blackwood, but on the other side of the street, didn't pay. I'm like six houses down Pancake, and I paid. So I'm just curious, does like who made up these maps, and why, like if this is the forest, and this is Mr. Feely's property here, on that side, they aren't paying. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm just curious as to who developed the plan and, and the, the reasoning. Okay, uh, Paul, can I? Have you answer that, please? So the spray box boundaries were based on property boundary lines and um, susceptible trees within those property, property boundaries. So if you were across the street from Mr. Freely, um, just knowing the area, there wasn't any oak, and so we kept the boundary on the west side of the street, so only on Hillcrest side. I'm on Pancake on the other side from Hillcrest. I'm the last house that got charged, but I don't. I have one tree and it's a maple. <laughs> like I just don't understand. The people behind me didn't get charged. The people that side didn't get charged. Everybody closer to Hillcrest didn't get charged, but I got charged. And I'm like, well, if these are moths, isn't it more like? Isn't it more logical that they would walk across Blackwood Crescent? then all the way down to my house? I'd have to... Uh, I can show you. I have the map on my phone. Sure. Well, why not? Can we do it afterwards? Is sure. that possible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem. Beautiful. I'm just curious. Okay. Okay. Because that's the first time I ever saw a map of, like, who got charged. Like, we were told people got charged, so we all assumed our neighbors all got charged. Then you're talking to your neighbors, and they're like, I didn't get a bill. It's like, well, how would I get a bill? And you're closer to the park, and you don't get a bill. Like... I'll talk to you after. Okay, thank you. Uh, Martin Souden, I live on uh, Crossville Road, stop the haste. And I'm sorry, uh, could you repeat your name one more time? Because the clerk didn't get it. Martin Souden, I live on Crossville Road, just off the haste. Okay, thank you. And uh, along continuing this lady's point uh, she just made before me, same question is. We have, I watched, the, I watched the helicopter go down the property line between Cross Hill and Spruce Side, and am I to assume that he turns the spray on and off when he sees an oak? Okay, so that's kind of ridiculous, I guess, to say. But along those lines is, my point being is, and I think everybody, and that's why we're all here, is we're all having a lot of trouble in trying to determine how you determined who got charged and who didn't get charged. Because I watched that helicopter go down the, the line and my neighbor didn't get charged, two neighbors down got charged, I didn't get charged. So that's the issue is whoever decided who to charge who needs to do a better job next year. That's, that's my first point. Okay. My second point is, is prevention. I've lived in, I'm, I'm a seven year resident now. Um, I've lived in several municipalities who had gypsy moth issues. And I was under the impression that uh, prevention is the, way to, uh, is the way to address these infestations. Once the infestation is there, then you've got to deal with the spraying issue. So. The two, the two municipalities I, I lived in beforehand, they had a program where they um, supplied every homeowner with a trap and with tree banding material. Yes, the onus was on the owner to hang the trap, empty it on an every, every other day basis, <coughs> band their oak trees or whatever trees they felt necessary. I did that yes, this year along with my neighbor and my second neighbor. And I can tell you we have no issues with gypsy moths. And every second or third day, I was, if I didn't get out to empty that, that trap to, uh, of, of the male moth, it, it was too full. 
So I think, the, I think we're missing the issue. Everybody's really concerned about how much we're paying for all of this, and understandably so. So to finish off, I think we need an al another alternative here, and that should be, that I don't think anybody has a problem with paying $20 for a trap, which I got at the hardware store, or some banding material as part of the cost that the whole town could absorb. Rural areas, I'm not sure, but as far as the urban areas are concerned, that's, that's my point. I think prevention is the way to go after this and not pay the cost afterwards. Thank you. The only thing that prevents an infestation of gypsy moth is wet weather. There's a fungus and a virus that keeps it under control. The pheromone trap, I think, Martin, you're referring to, studies have clearly shown when you bring in pheromone onto your property, you actually draw more male moss onto it, which increases the chance that you have fertilization and you have more egg masses. Um, in terms of the bands around the trees, uh, yes, they're, they're good. Removing egg masses is also very good whenever you can. Um, but the most important thing is actually a healthy tree. You, the, the less stress the tree goes through, the better it'll be able to adapt not only to gypsy moth infestations, but a, a variety of other things. Um, and Martin, I. Again, I'm more than willing to meet with landowners on the property. Do I know exactly where you are and your neighbors? I mean, I have a sense. Um, I walked the properties three to five times. So yes, I'd be able to show you why we selected that property and did not select that property. So again, if we can meet and we can meet in your neighborhood and I'm more than happy to do that. Kevin Kerr, Maple Street, Fenwick, Ontario. I've been involved in the business and have known Paul for as long as he's been in it, and I was a specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture and Food. I've been involved with this for 40 years and teach population dynamics and biocontrol and other things at the university level. So very familiar with this topic, and I guess a couple of things that come to mind, and I teach a course on pest control to deal mainly with agriculture and much more than the, the uh, forestry environment. One of the first things we start with is, is pesticide applications or uh, biological applications. But we also look at alternatives that are out there for control. Banning has been discussed. I think something that needs to come to the forefront from the town level is truly a citizen education program. They need to know more about the real biology of this pest, when it actually hatches and how to determine when that occurs, when optimum timings are for applying pesticides should a person choose to do so on their own on their own properties. There are a large number of trees within the boundaries, especially within Cherry Ridge, infested with gypsy moth, but are very small magnitude in height. The leaves are being stripped. They don't really require aerial spraying with a helicopter. There may be options for ground applications and ground application equipment in those particular environments and for particular homeowners. That needs to be investigated for people because that is another option. Yes, in a mature tree stand, I live on a piece of property that's been in the family for over 100 years. We have maple trees over 100 years, but we have birch that are much younger. And this year, I even found gypsy moth taking out the growing terminals on Colorado blue spruce. Yet, the leaves on the maple trees were in pretty good shape, but the population was still high enough there. So yes, there are things that you need to do. Did I spray? Yes. Did I get access to, to bacillus? Yes. Did I apply it and did it work? I felt very effectively. But there are things that homeowners can do, but a lot of people feel afraid that they don't know what to do. And this is where education is a critical factor of all the people in the town, knowing when things are active, when they're actually active, how to look for it, and how to deal with it. Some things may also be under the purvey of being able to be done by students. Some people may not want to get into banding trees. It's just too much of a headache and a difficult process. There are students that have opportunities to do volunteer time that can work on things like this within certain municipalities and certain neighborhoods. Why not take advantage of it? There are a lot of elderly people who don't want to get into this game because they're scared of it. Don't be afraid. 
If one thing I can tell people for BT and the knowledge of it and how it works, don't be afraid. It's a very effective material, and believe it or not, you can access it if you want at Canadian Tire. You can put it in hose end sprayers and spray trees yourselves and be completely safe. So there are options, and, and I took the mayor around, and I took uh, Councillor Siofli around to show them. And there will be some trees. These are younger trees that were denuded of leaves and had very limited regrowth that I have personal concern over their survival this winter because of the uh, carbohydrate reserves in them. And if we have a hard winter, which they're projecting, I'm going to see, I think, a lot of dead wood this year in, in trees. And this is critical in investment by the town on boulevards. So if anything I can say is look at grower education, look at other options for control and application technology, and take advantage of it. Take advantage of people who know. I'm one of the crazy people that wrote the letter to show the picture of all the, the, the egg masses on particular trees and put it in the voice of Pelham last year. Because I said, it's going to be bad in 2019, and it's following the same criteria. I do pest evaluations and population dynamics, not on a forestry level, so don't come ask me to do it. <laughs> I leave it to the urban and, and the forestry professionals, such as Paul. It takes more than just thinking you know what it is to do it. That's my suggestion to the council. I'm Donna Boxa. I live in Fenwick. Actually, I live on the other side of a uh, open field uh, from Mr. Kerr. So the problem I had in our area in Fenwick was there's a whole bunch of us that back onto the Carolina Forest Ravine. And in that strip of land, every single homeowner signed, we went around personally because it, it wasn't notified enough. We all signed the waivers. We all looked at the billing and we were going to be charged or sorry, $575 per house um, that back onto the Carolina forest. I have 0.34 of an acre. Some people had 0.58 of an acre. We were all supposed to be charged the same price. The problem is that acreage for the Carolina forest, which is government protected, the city has a responsibility to protect that land. We cannot cut a branch, we can't cut a tree, we can't do anything to that property because it's protected Carolina forest. So that land can't be touched by us, the homeowners. And there's a section of that which is actually city-owned park land that the city's responsible for. And what happened when we did the spraying, we asked, since we've all signed the waivers, can we just use the acreage of that Carolina forest that we all back on to and we have property with, and can we just divvy it up amount through the number of houses? And we were told no. We were told each house had to pay, instead of the acreage of three, say, um, three kilometers, we were told, no, no, each homeowner has to pay zero to three. So instead of the whole thing costing $575 to spray, each homeowner was told to, spray, uh, to pay that amount, which to me is ridiculous. To me, it's a bit of a, a money grab because you have us under a barrel because we have to protect that land we're responsible to protect, but the city's also responsible to protect it. You are already flying over the part of that land, that actual ravine, which is owned by the city. So it wasn't like you were bringing a plane out just to do our little strip that you were already there. It was just flying over another two kilometers of land in a straight line. So we actually had to individually household debate with you, argue with you for hours on the phone to get you to drop our price. And then you were giving different prices to different people. Then you were, yes you were. And then you were, some people, um, were charged differently according to their acreage. So I think what part of the problem is with our area for the spring was it seemed very unfair. It seemed very dependent if you negotiated with you or not, whether we could have our price dropped. And that transparency part was very frustrating and very upsetting. Uh, the part about individual citizens doing it on Kirk Crescent and Sandra 
the city boulevard, you walk along there across from the park, covered right now, up and down the trees with egg sacs this big. One tree, I counted 162 egg sacs on one tree, and that's city owned. So why isn't the city going around what I did? I power washed part of the forest, had three extension cords going in, and I cleaned up every, every egg sack I could get. But the city's not even doing that. So these are the city boulevard trees you guys aren't even cleaning to protect with the egg sacks. So those are the issues that don't seem fair. Good evening, my name is Kira Newman. Let me know if you want me to spell that later. I'm an ecologist. I um, do research through the University of Guelph. My background and my expertise is in pollination ecology. So I uh, don't have a lot of expertise in this area, although I have worked extensively with diamondback moth, which is a bad crop pest. But I did reach out to some colleagues who are also involved in this um, debate and not the money debate, but the ecological debate about um, gypsy moth and BTK, uh, specifically individuals that are right now dealing with this in High Park in Toronto. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to bring up a couple of other issues that maybe haven't been brought up yet, and that is the underlying ecology that we're talking about here. So I know that um, trees are beautiful, they're, they're valuable in our landscapes, but I think that it's important to also see their ecological significance. And one thing that, um, that actually was, was misconstrued was that there's no damage to any other animals when we spray BT. In fact, every single Lepidoptera, so every butterfly and every moth species, dies upon contact with BT. And while I understand that when we're dealing with infestation uh, level events, it is important to address this, you have to also understand that you are killing every single um, larva out there. And whether you love monarchs and tiger swallowtail butterflies or not, the deeper issue here is one of, of, of the food web. A lot of other animals rely on those larvae for sustenance. And for example, um, although we think of songbirds as being uh, seed eaters, in fact, 95% of species of songbirds have to feed their um, offspring caterpillars. One nest of chickadees requires 6,000 caterpillars. So when we spray, we're actually depleting the whole level of food web that supports our songbirds. So when we look at these options, we really do need to pick the option that has the least amount of damage to the food web. We have to keep that in consideration. The other point that I just wanted to make was one about the trees. Trees are beautiful, but they're only performing their ecological role when they get eaten. I'm not talking about eaten to the point where year after year they're defoliated and, and then die. But trees are really good about bouncing back. So they can handle a certain amount of, of um, defoliation and still come back. And so we have to remember to look at our trees not just as being beautiful, but also fulfilling that role um, in providing ecosystem services and, and other important ecological roles. Thank you very much. Mayor, if I could just respond. Uh, if I could just respond. Yeah. Um, uh, the young woman is correct. Uh, trees are able to respond after defoliation. What's actually, every infestation <coughs> I learn something. I've, this one I've maybe learned more than normal, but um, supposedly trees produce 30% more foliage than they actually need in anticipation that there's going to be defoliation as they share their food, their foliage in the food web. Um, a correction on BT, it is a biological insecticide, it is not a chemical, it does not work on contact, it has to be eaten. The only caterpillars that are eating the upper canopy of trees in the two week period that we're spraying is eastern tent caterpillar and gypsy moth. Garner blue is the only other caterpillar that is a larva at that same stage and there is none in Niagara. All your other butterflies are larvae in the summertime, August, July and August. And so we're not spraying there and they're not affected. Yes, would they be affected if we sprayed PT and they were eating what we were spraying? Yes, they would be. Okay. Thank 
Thank you. Uh, good evening. Don't forget, uh, uh, a little closer to the mic, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good evening. Uh, oh, and we also, I'm sorry, to be, uh, we need your name. I was getting to that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Good evening. My name is Frank Martinego. I'm a Long Spur Circle Fawn Hill resident. Uh, I've sensed a, a few themes here tonight, one being history. Obviously, uh, that's important to, to everyone. We learn by our experiences. Second being cost, estimates, uh, different uh, debates on how it should be done or what it should cost. History was meant for one reason to be learned from. So I understand that you have a tough job in making a decision and being under the gun to make that decision. And that's why we elect you and, of course, hire people to uh, take care of some of the details. That being said, I, I have to reiterate that we need to learn from history. And I don't see that being learned from history because now we're back at the same spot Again, having to go under the gun and having to make that decision. No, I, I got, if I can, uh, and I don't yeah. want to get a debate, and I don't mean to interrupt your presentation, sir, but, but these ahead. alternatives are indeed a step forward, and, and that's what we have learned, that to, uh, to wait until there, uh, we have, have to do something, it, it's not a good thing. We, we, uh, so we're trying to get a plan formulated so that we're not running around the neighborhood or what, what should we do, what should we do. So, so we have learned that what happened in the spring is not good. So these are the alternatives, and unfortunately we haven't really been talking about the alternatives, but believe me, we, we've learned from this experience and, and, and moving ahead, we will be better. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, true. However, I would have to also say that in the past, I know it's history, but this was covered by the town. And I also had the sense from quite a few people here in, in some of the words that have been said, I'm making this a community effort. It really should be a community effort. It was done that way before. So to say that we have learned, yeah, you have some alternatives, hopefully more will come out and there will be a, a path that everyone can agree upon or at least the greater the greater amount of people can agree upon, but we do need to move forward, and I don't see that happening just yet. You presented us with a meeting which really, uh, as you mentioned before, that in the past four years we haven't had very many meetings on a town basis or invited the public to come out and talk. So I think that has to be appreciated by the public as well. And at the end of the day, I can only stress one thing, and that is it is a community, so let's act as a community. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. If I can just make a comment. Uh, again, uh, somehow or other tonight, we, we did have this meeting so that we could uh, find out from you, the residents, which way you want us to go here? So if you don't, uh, if we don't do it, at least if we don't do it by coming up and talking to us, then for goodness sakes, when you get on the way out, take another look at these and and, and be uh, uh, send some emails either to the CAO, myself, the counselors in your ward, and and let us know what you want us to do going forward. We've heard that. Uh, uh, yeah, it seems that you, know, you want us to treat this as a community thing, uh, spread it out to the community, that's fine. Uh, but, but again, we would, uh, there were six alternatives, so we would like to see uh, emails or some kind of feedback so that we know uh, uh, where everyone stands. Um, see it, Mr. CEO? We have, in fact, created a, uh, an email address. Oh, you're certainly welcome to email the mayor and myself. But uh, Mark, it's gypsy moth at pelham.ca, moth plural or gypsy moths or moth, gypsy moth at pelham.ca. Please, we'd really love the commentary, the feedback to sort of give us something to work with. Very much so. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. My name is Donna Moody. I live on Concord Street in Fun Hill for the past 20 years. 
I know we're going to move forward. Lots of things have been said so far. We live on the far west end, but our properties do go against an urban property that was sprayed by the contractor here. And our neighbors did pay for that. And we've obviously either been sprayed twice or you're, you've been billed twice. I just want to make that comment. The alternatives, watching the presentation earlier, staff went over those alternatives. I, I find it interesting that two or three of them that they pointed out were millions of dollars, somewhere around one million, somewhere around four million. Clearly that's not where the people of this room want to be. So I don't know if they're really viable alternatives or not that you're presenting. Just give us the good ones, well, because that's what we're all looking for. Like I say, we, yeah, did we go way over the limit? Yes, we probably did, but we... we Absolutely. We, we did. And we, we have to talk about we, consent we and things like that. We presented the alternatives. I'm can hoping, we, of course, can we, we talk, don't talk about that. consent, though? Because I have a letter that says that you, I consented to this, and a letter sent by the town that says, further to the notice you were serve, served in May in the letter, but we never got no notice. Nobody did. And I'm really surprised tonight to hear that some bills have been taken back and some bills have been refunded. It's the first any of us heard of that. Another thing is, it's really interesting, the first map that I saw given to me by the city was uh, an aerial map with red uh, mapping areas on it that were sprayed. But when I got the bill and I look now, it's a different map. And conveniently it was updated apparently on August the 6th, after we were all billed on July the 31st. So if we're going to move forward, let's move forward honestly. Let's do our math. Let's do our homework. Let's read Mr. Freely or Frank's white paper, which was very good. And I did take the time to read it. And maybe, maybe after listening to the presentation tonight, um, we're really not concerned that it's going to make the staff's life easier in the upcoming year. I'm looking to make sure all the people in this room's lives are easier so they don't have to pay a $260 bill. Uh, Paul, do you want to uh, address that about the changing of the maps, perhaps? Um. I, all I can say is um, the, um, they're okay. The date August, uh, the mapping that was produced for the spraying was there was initial one in May and one shortly before we sprayed. Um, the only reason there were two areas that were spread that we increased the um, boundary. Um, We had just missed three or four trees that were on two properties, I want to say. But um, there was discussion at a council meeting. It was in the Cross Hill, uh, intersection of Cross Hill and Park Hill. Is that correct? So th there was a minor change there where we added two properties because we added a bunch of trees. Um, and, and part of that was, it was sort of our third review of the, all the spray blocks to make sure that we felt it was accurate and the acreage and the landowners that we felt needed to be sprayed were included. Um, don't quote me, but there was a council meeting in April. Um, Mr. Freely was there and presented, I recall. And one of the suggestions was is that we why are we just spraying the backyard of the property? Um, if the landowner is paying for spraying, then why don't we spray the entire acreage? Um, my, my suggestion there is because only the backyard needed to be sprayed, not the front yard and not the roof and not the driveway. However, um, the decision was made to, if the property was being sprayed, then we would spray the entire property. So the acreage line went from possibly behind the house to along the street edge. That would be the only two changes that I made on any mapping from the first map to the second map. There is a map um, that has been posted on the website. It is similar to the one that is above Mark. 
Um, I've put in some red lines there. They were just areas that I wanted to highlight to staff and to public where that's where the spray block line was and you can see where the spraying occurred. Um, there was one area along Woodstream where the spray block did not, the spraying did not go to exactly the edge of the spray, but virtually all the other spray blocks did or were above and beyond. And again, it's on the website for you to take a look at it, and that's the one that's blue, the first application. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Go, on. Go ahead, sir. Hi, my name is Mark Hughes. I live on Burko Terrace. A uh, few comments that I'd like to make. Um, one, I'll, I'll take on that uh, motion that you're talking about, the map change. Um, I was part of that change. My property apparently wasn't on the first map. Um, I spoke to Mr. Hildebrandt a couple times. We, we come to the property. Um, and uh, during, from the day that the staff delivered a paper to my door saying that your area is going to be sprayed. We don't know the whole, I'm abbreviating, but we don't know the whole cost that's going to be involved, but we'll let you know more information later. So I reached out to Bob. I said, I'd like to know what the deal is. There's not a lot of information on this piece of paper. He took my address, contacted somebody along the line, and said that my property was not on the map to be sprayed and I would not be billed. Um, of course, I got a bill. Um, Bob investigated for me. He found out that there was a map change. So now I have to pay the $260, which when I had asked if I was going to be billed, I was informed that I would not be billed. So I probably would have took a different course of action earlier on had I known I was going to receive a bill. So that's statement one. Uh, a lot of other topics that I was going to bring up have already been brought up, so I hope the town um, addresses some of these things formally. I would like to request, though, um, if the town has a way to formally allow everybody that disagrees with A, the spraying, the cost of the spraying, or any issue that they don't feel is right to them, a formal way to record that down. I think we deserve that. It should be on formal record somewhere. Uh, our names, our addresses, that we did not agree. Uh, even if somehow we have to pay for this, you say we're not going back, um, uh, at least we have that opportunity to say that we didn't agree with it. Um, and thirdly, to the alternatives, um, other than an email, um, is there also a formal way that you're going to conduct how that decision is going to be made? Um, and what kind of input uh, can we formally put in for that other than just sending an email? Well, this is it. I mean, with respect, and to reiterate again, please come to the mic and tell us Tell this council who's sitting here before you wanting to receive some guidance in your is, thoughts. Is, is somebody making a ticker list of, of, of those We are professionally recording suggestions? this. We have about 15 minutes left in this meeting, and we're still waiting for some guidance on what next year should look like. Please, please. Well, I think you need to go beyond tonight. I think there needs to be a little bit more discussion beyond tonight. Yeah. This, this can't be just it. I know there's a lot of time constraints and uh, RFQs. I know I'm, I'm familiar with the RFQ process. It's going to take time. If you're putting one up by Friday in order to make a decision on who to hire to do an analysis of all the egg sacs, and you're not going to get the results in time to do a budget analysis, like what's what's tonight going to really do? Like it's, there's not enough time. Well, it tells us. Uh, I, I don't understand why this is. Uh, why this is being so hard, but we have to know for a budget process, yes, it, uh, it goes all the way, if you take it literally, it goes all the way from 20,000 to 4.5 4. million, but the 4.5 million obviously is just there to fill out the paper, I guess. I don't know what it is. But the fact of the matter is, when we can't do a budget process, unless we know what, 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 what do you want us to do? You want us one, two, three, four, five, six. That, that's what we want to know. Uh, yeah, like the, we can go to the treasurer and say, set this amount of money aside, but we don't know what we need. 
Each one of those is a different thing. It goes from 20 to 125,000. Uh, if the, the, I think number five, it goes up to 350,000. So this is it. Tell us what the, uh, uh, tell us what one you want uh, as you go out. Take a look. And do you want it? Uh, that seems to be everybody wants to spread over the town. That's great. But there's so many others. A couple of the options there that do you want to uh, that. Just take a look at it and you'll know what it is. I mean, I'll, I'll go on the town website. But that way we know what the majority of people, I mean, these are the people here that were mostly affected, I take it, by the Gypsy Moth. You came out tonight. Go to the website and say, no, six stinks, uh, two I don't agree with, but I can live with three or four or five or, or whatever it is. And then we tally up the numbers. And if you have other suggestions, by God, goodness sakes, Put them down there. Okay. Is, is there a date when the tally will be tabulated? I don't know. I would think that when we'll see a date when they start stop coming in. I imagine we'll get a lot of response tomorrow, the day after, the day after that, early into next week uh, when this is covered in the voice, and that thereafter it'll drop off fairly significantly. Kind of like when you pop the popcorn, you get a lot. And then just a couple kernels at the end. I, th I think it'll be similar to that. Very official. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Graham Ashdown, Blackwood Crescent in Font Hill. Uh, as I understand it, there was 108 acres uh, that were sprayed, and the 294 residents were charged $625 an acre for that spray. This evening I heard that if you have over a hundred acres, that uh, the rate per acre would be something like a hundred dollars or less per acre. Less. I also heard today that the cost of using a, the costly twin engine helicopter would be four times that of the regular helicopter. So I'm having difficulty reconciling less than $100 an acre and four times as much, which where I come from would be $350, maybe $400, yet we were charged $625 an acre. Somebody can help me with that math, that would be appreciated. Um, what I can say is uh, the cost to actually spray was about $500 an acre and there was about $100 um, an acre, give or not, no, not $100 an acre. There was, um, I'd have to look at the math, Graham, but the, long, the, the cost of the spraying for the urban included all the ground applications, setting up the police, putting out all the signage, the, day of the, the days of spraying, all the groundwork that was done. Um, so it doesn't cost four times as much? Uh, well, there are two elements that are in the spray cost there. One is the aerial spraying, and the other is the actual work on the ground. I'm just going based on what you said, so I'm, I, I'm trying to understand it. Well, I'm giving you rough numbers. If we can... Zimmer Air is here if you want to talk. We, we do know that we're not sure where the cost of $300, $350 an acre in, in Toronto. Um, I know that's not what they were charged. It was probably closer to double well, we that. Met earlier in the year at uh, one of the town meetings, I, I recalled the, you telling me it costs about three to four times as much. Tonight I'm hearing four times as much as well. They don't seem to... I'm sorry, I left. They don't out seem the to three. pan out. Yeah, they don't seem to pan out. So, it'd be useful if we had that information, if it's possible that uh, perhaps the uh, town treasurer would like to vet that information because it doesn't seem to add up. If you're prepared to provide that, I'm not. No, sorry, I don't have the data with me, and we. No, have I to don't get mean now. I mean in the future. Well. They have got the costs in our quote. Um, again, we can provide some information from Just Zimmer doesn't seem Air. to add up. That's my point. Okay. Okay. okay thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ma Mr. Mayor, just I'd like to make a comment. Uh, we hire the services of a professional to undertake our survey work and provide us quotes to to complete a work, just like any other assignment. On a road reconstruction project, we would get 
quotes from a, a prices and our proposals from an engineering firm that would give us professional fees. So um, as staff, we rely on those uh, fees uh, that come in from the experts. I believe uh, if you look back at our reports and our public documents online, we provided the breakdown of the acres that was sprayed with the, with the per unit price that was applied to that rate. That's what was used to, de to determine the amount of the program within that 108.5 uh, acres that were in the urban boundary that were sprayed on private property. And it was a simple calculation to take that value based on that unit rate that was provided by our consultant, divide that through the properties that were within those spray blocks to come up with a per price per property. And that's as simple as that. That's how that was determined. And those, those documents, that breakdown of within the urban and the rural areas are provided as part of our council reports that went to council. Mr. Mayor, Council, my name is Jerry Vandebeek and I live on Hay Street in Fawn Hill. I am, uh, I want to put it plain and simple. I want to put it plain and simple. I'm mad, I want my money back. If I taxes were 2,500 bucks a year, you guys just raised my taxes up 10%. Where is that even fair? The reason you're not getting any response from moving forward is nobody's healed from what we have to pay. It's 2019 and I feel that, um, I feel that it, that the people should be able to get their money back because we're all treating this like tax dollars. We all agreed that we're going to move it forward through the town. I feel that the town should be treated separately from those that are live in the rural areas. If you choose to live in the rural areas, you should pay a price for that, and that maybe that price is that that um, cost of living out in the, having acreage out in the rural areas is something that you would pay for in your own uh, protection. But in town here, I think that moving forward, that we should spread that as a tax. It should be an operation budget, and that's the way I would feel. But I'm mad, and I would like my money back. My name's Gay Fuller. Um, I live on Canberra Road between Haste and Effingham. I'm rural. <laughs> um, I paid... Uh, Separately, I paid $1,268 last year to be sprayed, and my property is loaded. I've gone around to um, trees that I could, areas I could reach and scraped, but I've uh, con uh, contracted um, with a tree service to do a ground spray for me next year, and that's $1,800. Plus, I'm probably going to need an aerial spray for the bush. So my feedback is I'm in favor of option five. Council, my name is Harvey Haggerty. I live on Concord, I live on Concord Street. I'm not gonna talk to you guys. I used to fly, I couldn't afford it anymore. So that's enough. To you guys, I can't, sorry, I can't believe the letter I received saying that I owe 260 bucks. We elected you guys. I can't believe you sent a letter like that. And I'm really offended going forward. I don't want to get a letter like that. We elected you people. Why didn't you say, how about a tax refund? How about a donation? I think I would have given you more. I didn't like that letter. You guys had to vote that. It's not right. You can't dip into my pocket like that. It's wrong. Going forward, take Frank's white paper and rip it apart. We've all contributed to that. I've had Frank in my house. That's my suggestion going forward. Look at his paper. I don't want to ever get a letter like that again. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Charlene Barrett, live out in the rural program area. We had about 24 acres worth of forested area sprayed, almost $3,000 almost $3, worth. Um, my father's done it for years. I wondered whether or not I wanted to spend that money on it. I figured my father was a conservationist, wanted to keep the trees healthy. I went ahead and did it. Um, moving forward, 
based on, I didn't get a chance to read all the alternatives in detail. I came in a little bit late. Um, obviously, the majority of the population in Pelham is in Font Hill. Uh, if the urban areas only are sprayed by the town, at, on the town's uh, dime, it would only be reasonable to assume that the majority of people in Font Hill would want it across the board funding, like someone referred to as snow plowing. It doesn't really quite work. Snow plowing and, and gypsy moth problems are not quite on the same basis. Um, I feel that if there were going forward something uh, that the town was going to pay for the urban area, then tax the urban area. I'll take care of my property in a cyclical fashion. I don't. I think the uh, percentage of eight to ten worst case scenario eight to ten percent, excuse me, increase in taxes was proposed. If we were, the town was going to foot the bill for the whole town. I'm not interested in paying 8% increase every year. I'd much rather pay a one-time shot every five to seven years to cover my property. Thank you. Um, I'm sure everyone's tired of hearing me tonight. Uh, my name is Jennifer Pilsacker. I'm from Pond Hill. And uh, I just had a question on the alternative options going forward. I know that there's some numbers attached to those, and I just want to know how we arose at, say, a number 4.5 million, if that was based on um, the numbers that came from Trees Unlimited this year, or if we looked at what other municipalities were paying, or we contacted other services for um, numbers. I'll answer that through, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So. When we wrote the report, we drafted the report, obviously um, there are larger spray programs that other municipalities perform and undertake. Um, for example, City of Toronto, uh, City of Hamilton. So we reached out to some of those municipalities to find out um, with that economy of scale, with that large of a spray, what would be uh, a kind of a considered a cost uh, per, per acre to perform that work. So that's the rough estimates but they're, they're estimates. So that's how we came up with uh, uh, some of those numbers. With respect to the alternatives that we're dealing with a spray program of similar size to what we just performed in 2019, then we were comfortable with some of the numbers that we had with respect to this year's program and applied those to kind of best worst case scenarios for those options. And I'd just like to also say, uh, the previous speaker that was up, um, made a mention, uh, mention that they didn't have time today to uh, read all the alternatives. Mark, I do believe that those, all these alternatives, these boards are on our website. <coughs> That's correct. So the, the alternatives are on the website. So feel free to, to visit the website. Again, read through the alternatives. And then there's the Gypsy Moth uh, email that you can send responses back if you'd rather send it to the mayor. Uh, he's looking at me funny. Um, <laughs> but either way, you send an email to us, we'll get it. But have a, have a look at those alternatives. Send in your comments, even if it's a, a, a different rendition or a spin on one of these alternatives that you'd like to see. And then we can take that information and compile that and, uh, and present something to council as, as a staff recommendation on how we move forward. Sorry, so just one little interruption. Uh, we are going to go past the curfew, so that's fine. But we have to, uh, uh, because this is a committee of the whole meeting, we have to do uh, something to extend the curfew. Just two seconds. So I have here a motion. I have here a motion from uh, Councillor Hirtlebrand uh, that the rules of rules of procedure as contained in the Town of Pelham procedural bylaw be suspended and that the specified meeting curfew time of 9 p.m. be and is hereby waived, and that the remainder of the business listed on the agenda for this meeting continue to be considered until all matters have been concluded. Uh, any debate on this, Council? Not seeing any, I call the question. All those in favor? All those against? Motion passes, we continue the meeting. Go ahead, sir.
Yes, Ron Masco, Oak Ridge Boulevard, Font Hill. I'm very close to Canberra, where this lady behind a little while ago mentioned a huge number of, or a bad infestation. <coughs> My property, I've lived on 22 years. Um, I've had some outbreaks. Um, I've taped my trees around the trunk to keep the caterpillars off, and I've also had more problems with Japanese beetles. Um, I do not kill anything. Um, my lawn is full of grubs. Uh, I have earthworms, I have birds, I have all kinds of insects, bees, and I cohabitate with them, and they leave me alone, I leave them alone, they leave me alone, whatever. Anyway, on my property, every tree in 22 years I planted myself, uh, except the back corner has a red uh, sugar maple. Right now it's turning red. But behind my property, right next to the back edge of my property, is a Carolinian forest with all the Carolinian trees. I won't list them. Um, and I'm sure they must be in there because I only had one caterpillar on my property, which for which I paid $260. Um, I don't know why they charged me $260 for one caterpillar, but anyway. Um, I'm wondering, uh, the, the biology of these critters, we had some people mention about the male flying around and so on, but I gather from looking on the internet that the female moth that lays the eggs does not fly. So I'm thinking the only way that one caterpillar got onto my property, it had to walk. It can't fly. So that's why the tape around my trunks and my trees stopped them from getting on, and that's why I only found one. And the male caterpillar, the male butterflies, um, in the life cycle, they fly around and find the females, and then they have eggs and so on. So if I were to look at my trees, I bet there's probably no eggs on my trees on my property. So I'm wondering in the forest behind my house, high up maybe, in, in the uh, oak trees, the hickory trees that are quite tall, they're probably hiding in there. And um, I don't know what I can do to protect my property to get at those egg masses that are up really high. But there's the spray program is basically after that stuff because the female moths, they can't fly, I'm told. Is that true? Anyway, thank you. Paul, can you, Paul, can you answer that question in, in your years? Sorry, the female does not fly. The Asian gypsy moth does, the female does fly, just so there's no confusion there. The way this caterpillar, the, the European gypsy moth, it, its primary way of travel is to uh, ballooning in the springtime where the caterpillar, the egg mass hatches. The caterpillars are very tiny, they go up the tree, they know there are way too many caterpillars in the area that they are to support themselves, so they blow from tree to tree to spread out, okay? The other way is, it is called the gypsy moth because it's ability to move around. And so they attach the egg mass to firewood that you take to the cottage. It's on the rim of your car tire, so you drive it and you go to your mother-in-law's or wherever, but it is called the gypsy moth for its ability to survive and to move around. Um, if I could just add one quick thing, if I could, there's been some very good suggestions that people have made, Mr. Nichols, Mr. Kerr, um, Mr. Nichols about engaging landowners around egg mass surveys, that is a fantastic idea and understanding the pest and um, how landowners can be more involved, the impact of what they do on the property to the tree, the health of the tree. Um, definitely looking at alternatives, which uh, Kevin has suggested. Um, the one thing that was interesting in Oak Lane area, as we were going around looking at egg masses, there was very few. There were some homes that for some reason did not, had almost none. And it, as it turns out, it wasn't some miraculous environmental weather phenomenon. It was that the landowners had gone up the trees with ladders and had removed virtually all the egg masses. Um, so, you know, getting involved, it feels good. It is productive and in terms of controlling the infestation, but the caterpillar is controlled by drought. When there's a drought, it, the, the fungus that controls it dies off the population is able to rise, okay? It, 
the cycle, some people call it a cycle. We don't, it isn't a cycle. Um, some people felt it was on a 10-year rotation. It happens to be that at the moment, but it's got more to do with a 10-year period of drought coming in with the infestation increasing immediately after. Thank you. Um, Deb Seely Secos. Uh, I live on Canberra Road between um, Haste and Churchill. And um, this summer, I frequently walk through the cemetery and down AK Wig and into the back. And the infestation in the cemetery was horrible. And so I went around and I killed all the caterpillars that I could and I killed all the eggs and the gypsy moths and as many males and so on. And now that I've done that, I'm just wondering if you're going around and counting egg sacs as to decide on whether the area is infested and somebody did her Carolina forest in the back with the spray, how are you gonna know what areas were infested? And is the egg sacs the only way? Because I'm sure I didn't get them all, but I certainly got as many as I could, so. Thank you, there are a couple ways. Yes, the egg mass is one way. Um, the cemetery, is that the one that's central right um, on the west side of Pelham? Right in the center of town? Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah, that's um, Highland runs into it, AK Wig backs onto it, and Brock comes up into it. Yes. Now, I had been through there twice in the fall this time last year, and just to give you an example, there was no egg masses there. There was one in the entire cemetery. So that just shows you where the caterpillars have blown in from adjacent areas to do that infestation. So egg masses are helpful, but yes, people, I must admit the Oak Lane thing threw us for a little bit until one of them told us that that's what they had done and so we expanded the area to see where there were more egg masses, where there was oaks, and yes, you could see the egg masses were there. So it's sort of, we check a large area and certainly we talk to the landowners. So then the landowners are very important because they tell us whether or not they had the infestation the year before. And then uh, the third thing is the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. In the past, they have provided us defoliation mapping so we can see where they have flown the, the province, not just for gypsy moth, for a whole bunch of uh, defoliating insects. And they provide us the mapping, which leads us to where we had problems in the previous year. Um, there were also areas that, just because we're out for a walk, that we find um, down haste from Camborough down to at least Pancake had a zillion. And again, I killed what I could and scraped what I could, but I'm sure as one person, I didn't get them all. So there are areas out there that weren't covered. And now that I've taken all the egg sacs off, I don't know about next year. Uh. I have recorded your area, so again, I'll make it available for the town just so that it's included in the info by whoever does the survey that there is checked. My name is Rudy <coughs> Tashinsky. I live in Font Hill. Uh, I've heard a couple of different comments about on the criteria. Uh, seemed the criteria in certain areas, and I forget the numbers, whether there was 250 or 2,500 in other areas, and a low threshold of, say, 1,500 in this area. Can I ask why the difference in criteria? Well, um, for 35 years, the Ministry of Natural Resources has used 1,500 egg masses per hectare. Um, I'm not familiar with other levels in other municipalities, but if you go higher, it means less area is gonna be sprayed. So you read into what, if 
if essentially in a 10 minute walk, if you see more than 100 egg masses, the likelihood of having 85, 80% defoliation is, again, not 100%, but it is significant. That's the criteria that they use. That answers that question. Uh, the uh, competitiveness, uh, when you go out for pricing on s solutions like this, uh, do you not get uh, more than one quote to do this work? And I'm not directing that to you. You're the contractor, and I and we're just hearing from one contractor who, in fact, does the study to determine whether his work is required. Again, I'm not not saying this to be critical, other than the facts kind of would indicate that's not a good situation to have me go and look if your house needs some work. Uh, yes. So through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when we go competitive on the RFP to do the infestation survey and then consequently... I'm not talking about the survey, I'm talking about... Again, the, the spray program. It'll probably be the same consultants that are, that are pricing it. It'll be the same, same firms. Um, they're, they are limited. Um, we know that there are a few other uh, consultants that, uh, that are expertise in this, this end of work. Um, so we are hoping to get, yes, more than one submission uh, with well, respect? Um, I have only three minutes, so I have to rush. Well, I, I, we can pause it then. Um, I'll just want to respond to you here um, so that I'm giving you an immediate response. So <clears throat> yes, when we go to, to an RFP, we're, we're going to go competitive. We're hoping to get uh, more than one price. The past year, um, count, staff brought a report to council because of the timeliness of getting the spray program up and running. Um, we had requested to use Trees Unlimited, who have performed our infestation surveys and spray programs in the past successfully for the town of Pelham. And so last year, uh, that's the approach we took. Moving forward, um, it will be a competitive process. And yes, we hope to get more than one submission. Well, I think you have to start now to get prices. If you wait till the last minute, like it seems we did this year, we waited till the last minute took the only person available who was obviously overworked and was had to charge what he had to charge. Um, and that was my last question. The, a late purchase order probably is affecting your pricing and uh, some pre-planning each time history is brought up. Um, this council says, well, no, uh, history isn't a problem, but you have to be responsible for all of the work that's been done in your city for 20 years, 25, 30, that didn't go away. So yes, it is something that history isn't teaching this town very much, it seems. Hi, my name is Casey Ram, and I live on Rolling Meadows. Just want to say one gentleman who brought up the information about doing education. It's not only education for the adults, it's also for the children. I have pictures of by the old arena where we have a playground. Kids are playing in the droppings of caterpillars. And people don't even know that those are droppings. Would you like to have your kid playing on the, on the, on the uh, swing set there, going down the slide? going into droppings, but there is no education. We have all these little things here, but we're not educating the people of Pelham and the kids. Please do something for that. Donna Boxa from Fenwick. Just one other um, issue. I just wanted to ask, with the different options, if it is just the urban area getting sprayed, um, and it's only specific parts in the urban area, and all of Pelham's taxes go up. So the people that are not getting sprayed, that have to then pay themselves to get their property sprayed, but other people, it's being divvied up amongst the whole of Pelham to pay their, to spray their properties. So I don't quite understand how that works. Could someone explain that to me? Sure, I'll take a shot at that. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So 
you're right. The rural uh, population is, is developing their own spray program. I'm actually urban. I live in a subdivision in Fenwick, okay, okay. so I'm still considered, but, okay, but you're, I'm yeah. not on the map. Okay, right. So there was no urban spraying in, in Fenwick. Correct. correct. We're not part of Pelham, so I guess, so our taxes no, that's, wouldn't no, go up? No, that's something uh, definitely we will look into with respect to our urban areas, and I believe with our new RFP, we have identified the urban area within the uh, Town Hill, or sorry, Fawn, Fawn Hill proper, as well as Fenwick as urban centers. Okay, because to me it's not fair if you, you either spray what needs to, like spray the areas and we all take the cost, but if you're not gonna spray my area and I have to pay, and I'm paying for the Carolina forest, which the town is responsible to protect and the province is responsible to protect, and I contacted the province about that, um, so I have to pay for that $600 cost to pay for that and other people are getting their properties for one or two trees that they can kill those gypsy moth egg sacs on their own. We have a forest. I can't reach the canopy top. So I have no other choice but to protect that land that the town's responsible for and the province is responsible for, but no one's helping that cost. And I don't see any of that in there. So that you're asking us to pick a, oh, just pick it, you know, we have to know by next week or whatever. It's, this, people don't know that. People don't know to go to the website to look at that. And these don't have any of those options in there. They don't explain that I'm not gonna get sprayed, I have to pay myself, but my taxes are going to go up because other people are going to get sprayed for just a couple trees on their lot. So it's not a fair option oh. that you're giving us. So then I believe there's space that you can lay out your problem. But you're telling us we have to pick because you have no. to decide. Those are, Mark, That's what you there, had said. Can I, can I talk? Mark, uh, where is Excuse Mark? me. Mark, <laughs> is there a place on the website that if they have other ideas that they can put those ideas down? Or do, is it just those six options? You're saying we have to choose. Okay, well, just let me ask the mark. He, he knows the website. Uh, to be Mayor, there's not a specific um, form or place for residents to keep that information on the website. So this is just the email address that the GAO referred to. Tonight, we can do that. Uh, there are contacts uh, on the website page for this month where they can contact better. Uh, Been there, done that. No, it's just that you're saying these are our options, and yeah. this is what we have to decide on, yeah. and you guys will vote on those. Yeah. And these are our six options. Right. I'm gonna. I'm it, gonna. It's I'm not gonna, fair. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me speak to that. And I have already mentioned this as well tonight several times. These aren't set in stone. So, these are some concepts that came up. The staff came up with to present to council so that they could start thinking on how we're going to move forward. If there's some options you like from different alternatives and you want to put it into a different alternative for us to consider, then absolutely do that. Have a review of the alternatives. Go on the website. Send that email to the Gypsy Moth at pelham.ca pelham um, with how you think it should be handled. But the mayor was telling no, us no, that we no. had to make a decision because they we had need, to decide. We need to make a decision by fairly when soon, are we gonna correct. Know? Is there gonna but be I think it was it was also discussed that these are not hard options which we need to walk away with a decision tonight. We're going to have the opportunity for you to submit your feedback and comments on these alternatives. Maybe you have some better ideas that will incorporate some or all of these so items. So how will people know staff what you guys are voting on? So staff will be bringing a report forward to council with a re recommendation on a policy and how we move forward. And that'll be a public document. That'll be presented with a recommendation to council for consideration. But if I don't get sprayed, why are my taxes going up? This is going to be laid out in, in a policy or a, a, and an option that we'll present to council for consideration. These alternatives have, and they're not full, they're not complete, but they all, like, I understand your position. If you're in the rural, I'm in community, urban. and you're paying for I'm your in urban own. Backing on so if you're paying or right sorry, now, rural so right now you had to set up a spray program directly through Trees Unlimited or whoever you chose no. to. I'm I'm in urban backing on to okay. rural. But in this year's program, 
you had to contact some consultant to do an urban to do a spray the city program told us for you. To contact. We had no choice. Right. They said we had to contact. You this could have gentleman. contacted any. We had the, the the town had nothing to do with the rural spray program. And we I'm sorry. A, we were given you information are and, in the and urban this is spray who program we in to accordance contact. with our reports. So you could have hired anybody to do that. Correct. So what? I guess what I'm saying is your position is that you, if you had to do that on your own, you should not be receiving a tax bill for somebody in the urban area in Fawn Hill, correct? Is that what you're saying? If we're, if we're not gonna get sprayed, why should my taxes go up for the spraying? Correct. That's what I'm asking. Exactly, and so that's, that, that's, that's in one of those alternatives exactly like that, yes. In, in that case, what you're saying is you prefer if there's an urban spray program in Fawn Hill, then it gets spread amongst the urban uh, well, whoever gets base in Fawn Hill. Sprayed, but if I'm not sprayed and I have to pay independently, and my taxes still go up to pay for yeah, other I people I getting sprayed, then I'm paying twice. Yeah, I understand your position. You don't want to pay twice. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so I have a question. Or do I have hey, to hey, announce hey, myself again? Mic up. Okay. Um, so I have a question regarding the six alternatives. I heard uh, this evening that the RFP has not been completed, um, and the evaluation of any potential spray, therefore, is unknown for next year. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Merritt. So. The RFP that will be going out hopefully by the end of this week is strictly to do an infestation survey. It's not to develop a spray program. Okay, so you don't know what areas are, are infested then, and then, and of those infested areas, what spraying might take place uh, next year? Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Okay, so it's difficult uh, to um, evaluate the alternatives because any numbers that are up there are unknown at this point. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. So we are going on uh, the history that we've just uh, experienced in 2019 based on the levels of infestation that we experienced last year. And obviously other options of doing a complete urban spray, upwards of a million dollars, I mean, that's, uh, that's one of the options as well. But we're, we're going off the kind of the infestation levels that we've seen in the last couple of years. And, and so the assumption then is, uh, by way of example, in 2018 you sprayed Hillcrest Park, 2019 you sprayed Hillcrest Park. I suspect Mr. Robertson would tell us that there's no need to spray in 2020. It's been sprayed two years in a row. Uh, that's a first in the town of Pelham, so it's unlikely that it will be sprayed again. So when you're basing it on last year's numbers, you're still guessing at uh, where and what you might spray. So uh, to me, it's hard to evaluate the dollar component of those alternatives. And I'm just suggesting it may be uh, more useful to develop concepts for spraying to get input on. The, the pricing of it can come later and uh, that can then uh, be put to the public as to uh, how they want to proceed. But you, it, uh, to say something costs four million or 400,000 or, or 50,000, I think is just a, a pure guess on your part. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So <clears throat> the idea of doing the survey this fall is to find out what type of levels of infestation we're expecting for next year. This is a policy that's not only going to um, be valid for 2020, this is gonna be a policy moving forward for years to come. So we, yes, we can't predict levels of infestation. Um, in general terms, we've used so, some, so you, some infestation levels that we've experienced in the last couple of years to develop these concepts and put some rough numbers to them, but they're estimates. These are more, these are more in principle, these are the concepts which how you wanna see the um, development of this program moving forward. Right, so that's my point, uh, is that it's not going to be the same. Uh, you don't know what it's going to be next year, and you're not, you don't know what it's going to be in 2025. So it would be more useful, I, I suspect, I'm suggesting to the, for the public, to understand what the uh, concepts are 
uh, versus the cost, because the costs, I think, throw everybody off, because those are uh, an unknown at this point. That's my point. Hi, Kathy Gorman on Dogwood Court. And I would like to express something nice. Now you're all gonna be mad at me. The staff was really helpful to me. I called and called because I didn't want to pay the lump. I didn't want to pay, of course, nobody wanted to pay. But I didn't want to pay the lump sum. And they explained to me because I'm on a pre-authorized tax system, I can pay in 10 equal installments over next year which has greatly relieved me, but I think everybody should know that. But I do thank the staff, you were very patient with me. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, let's go uh, one, two, three. Any more speakers? Uh, if not, we're going to uh, call this meeting, uh, we're going to adjourn the meeting, so. Any other speakers? How much is it going to cost in terms of taking things and following the idea? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe the question was how much is the um, assignment to conduct the infestation survey this fall? Uh, how much is that going to be? Um, we uh, currently um, have uh, approval uh, through council. Um, in the amount of, I believe, $21,000 uh, to carry out this, uh, this survey and, and investigation, and we feel that is more than adequate budget to perform that uh, task. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, you know what? Actually, I guess uh, we do open it up. A minute, Councillor. Okay, we have a uh, motion put forward by uh, Councillor Trophy that Council receive the public written submission submitted to the clerk for information and that Council receive the verbal submissions by made by the public. Any comment on this? In not seeing any, I'll, I'll call it to the vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion passes, thank you. Uh, and now I will uh, open it to any comments, any comments uh, uh, that council has uh, regarding presentations made uh, tonight. Uh, and council trophy, you, are, you have expressed an interest. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. On that last uh, question in there, um, the gentleman presented there, and how much was uh, in the budget for um, to do the survey for the infestation this fall? And the director of uh, public works said we allowed twenty-one thousand. Can you tell me how much we paid last year for that uh, survey? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, of the total um, fee for the twenty nineteen spray program, um, which the town's portion plus which included also the uh, private properties that were sprayed. The total cost for that uh, program was in the order of $90,000. The cost for uh, program administration and the uh, initial survey was 10,000, in the order of $10,000. Um, as part of this assignment, um, we are asking the consultant to establish a grid system uh, w within the wards as well, uh, so that they can uh, we can map this out uh, properly moving forward and use that as a baseline and compare that to future uh, infestation surveys. So it'll be, we're asking the consultant to do a little bit more uh, work this time to set up a grid system so that we can track infestations and, and, and look at that as well. Thank you. Right. Done, Mike? Uh, Councilor Corgan, yeah, I got yeah, one yeah. more, but okay, okay. okay go ahead, Council. Oh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the director. Do we have a cost of what it cost us to uh, remove the trees that were infested by the gypsy moths? The dead ones? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't have that information at hand. Um, there are uh, a number of uh, tree removals that we do uh, throughout the town, uh, not only for, for issues related to gypsy moth, but uh, if you recall, 
um, the infestations we've had with the ash borer. Um, it depends on the, the, how the tree, uh, how big the tree is, um, and, and a lot of that service we do contract, though. We have an annual contract uh, that, we, that we undertake uh, large tree removals. At this point in time, I can't say exactly how many, what the cost was for gypsy moth. I appreciate that. To, uh, to, through you, to, Mayor, to the Treasurer, our budget, is it not over $300,000 removing trees, tree removal for the year? I thought I'd seen that, 275 to 300. Removal of trees? Oh, okay. I must have been mistaken. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mike? Yeah, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. This one here is just a couple of last questions for uh, Mr. Robinson from Trees and Lights. Is the cost for the aircraft? Whether it's twin or single, is it by the hour or by the kilometer? Or oh, he might have left already. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe uh, Mr. Robertson has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't have that information oh, he's available. Back. <laughs> he's back. Sorry. Yeah, through you, Mr. Brown, just repeat that. Um, I'm just wondering if you can tell me if the cost for the aircraft that's used for spraying, whether it's twin engine or single, is it charged up by the hour, the kilometer? I'll have the pilot come talk to you, and he'll <laughs> tell you what Thank you. Is. Dan Hopped from Zimmer Air Services. I wish it was that easy to answer. Uh, something I wanted to speak to here in general and the, and it's it's quite natural that there's probably very few people in here that understand the depth of what's actually going on in the background not just in the pilot seat but also uh, from a coding perspective from a legal perspective uh, we spoke a lot about the twin engine single engine etc uh, yes when we're talking simple charter work where you hire us to fly a single engine or a double engine uh, machine from point A to point B, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. It's by the hour. It's, uh, it is quite that simple. Um, but it's by the hour from when that machine leaves base, wherever that machine is called home. Um, when there's intricacies of application programs like this, we're talking not just the cost difference of operating a twin or a single engine or a piston-powered helicopter versus a, uh, a jet engine helicopter. We're talking um, the size and shape of the shape files that we're given, for example. Um, how it's not just per hectare, but it's maybe uh, there might be small spots here that are scattered all over the place. When there's small spots all over the place, the cost factor is atrocious versus if it was just one square patch uh, in a given area, and this is where we talk about the 100 hectare or 100 acre parcel parcels being so much less money. Oftentimes those are 100 acre parcels, that's a perfect rectangle to fly. We can fly that perfect rectangle of 100 acres in the matter of, of, of minutes and it would take us hours to fly that same hundred hectares or acres in a different scenario where it's just spot spraying all over the place. So very, very tough. I, I don't know if I answer the question, but uh, there's legalities in, in place, uh, Transport Canada rules, uh, permits, uh, all those become factors in that, uh, that costing. Thank you. I appreciate the answer. Maybe knowing the spray pattern that you used here in Pelham, would you be able to tell me what the difference would be between a single engine and a twin engine, the cost, using what you did in Pelham? Uh, I'd need about an afternoon to do that math. Okay. And, and do a full analysis of that. So, uh, No, to, to be able to give you that number off the top of my head, absolutely not. Not that easy. No, that's fine. Thank you. I was just trying to figure out the difference between the rule and the urban for 
Yeah, yeah. Like I say, it's it's per program, um, and then again, I think that going forward. So, if I may, for just a second, um, I think it's pretty clear from our perspective: the larger the program, the better. And I'm just not thinking of our pocketbook. I'm thinking economics for for the people here. Um, the cost per property is much much reduced when there's a larger program. That's pretty standard. We talk about snow plowing. If everybody on one road gets the same contractor to plow their snow, plow their driveway, the cost per driveway is substantially less than if everybody on that road hires a different contractor to do so. Pretty simple, straightforward math, right? Um, the other thing is, you guys were talking about um, RFPs for the consulting, uh, the time frames. Last year, I have to say, the township was very, very fortunate to have had a program at all. We were within hours of pulling the plug on you guys um, because it was strictly too last minute. Uh, it was a sheer miracle that we actually pulled this program off and stayed legal. Um, I think it, we're going to have to do something to provide the township with a uh, guideline of time frames a schedule, so to speak, and basically be able to say that once certain steps of those time frames aren't met, that we pull the plug on it. And uh, that, that will help, I think, going forward. Yep. Uh, yeah, if, like I say, if there's any other questions, just fire away. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Uh, I think it's a wrap. And, oh, of course, I guess I didn't. Any, any other councillor have any comments to make? I'm sorry. I'm OK. <coughs> OK. Let's uh, wrap this up. A recommendation from Councillor Trophy that this special meeting of committee to be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for November 4th, 2019, following council. All those in favor? All those that are opposed, this meeting is adjourned. And, uh, <laughs> and thank all of you that uh, came out tonight, and especially you that had the stamina to uh, stay to the end. <laughs> thank you. And remember, uh, please go to the website and let us know, uh, let us know your thoughts. Thank you. And thank